Them verses was tight, though, man. Them, them verses are not tight, bro. <laughs> nah, they ain't. Hey, no. They want to start back making them. I can't. You got to give them just that. Huh? Bro. This is the only big Sykes fan in the world, my nigga. Sit down. He makes up here. He over here. You know, you know I want it. I have my pistol and my chips. Yo, John. Whistle as a dip. Big Sykes daddy. That shit was tight? I was going to wait. Up on the county on the highway, my way. It was on the song of pop, right? Bro, you can tell he put no effort in writing his verses, bro. He put hella effort in that. Hell, That's the best bro. he could do. But you know why he, because pop was the kind of nigga, if you don't write your verses, he's going to go to the next nigga. So he was like, yo. Yeah, 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 I can tell. Big sight. Get up, baby. You ain't on vacation. It's checkout time. That's what we on. Big sight was more tight. Big sight. That's my nigga. Hell no, Big Psych was not. I was in there, you know, for TV on. I'm gonna my pistol with my chips. In the 90s, like, if you had enough money to make an album and put it out, like, between, like, 93 and, like, 97, you could've got rich to sell out the trunk. Yeah. Right. Well, so I remember man, if a nigga had a CD, I would buy it because it was such a rare thing for a nigga to have a whole project. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Was cool. yeah. That was cool in itself. Yeah. Too short. Shit, I remember uh, Fody came to Pasadena selling CDs like '89. <laughs> Fody was selling CDs in Pasadena. I mean, not CDs, uh, tapes. Tapes yeah, in Pasadena. Okay. The first I actually, the Take it, <laughs> taking that Pasadena credit the too. Then. The reels was easy to come by. I'm taking. I heard the reels was expensive. That's all Pete got. You had to really be selling real dope. Yeah, yeah. he made money in there. They said the reels was expensive. The studio time, it was really cool. Putting out your own shit. Studio time was crazy back then. Like studios everywhere now. Everywhere in your fucking living room. He poured it from Dana. Ninety six, ninety seven. Seven, a good studio was gonna run you like about uh, 150, 250 an hour, like in that range. That was a lot of money back then. That was like five, six hundred dollars an hour now, nigga. Damn. Man, we got a very special guest, or two, or three, or four. All we all, we all, we all, we all family. Man, ain't no guessing here, man. Why don't y'all give it up for Kevin Call? What up, yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God. My name is Kev, man. We gonna go on the journey, man. There's a lot of you people that want to get into this industry, but you don't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in this room participates in some facet, and we're just going to take you on a journey of what it is to be an artist, you know, starting from day one. So, Kev, man, tell everybody where you're from, bro. Man, well, first of all, man, the word of God says your, your talents will make your name seat you at table with great men. So it's just an honor to be here, first of all, because I really watch y'all. I've been coming out of depression, and this show is one of the things that I watch to even come out of that dark spot. So I just want to put that out there first. Not to leave it on no dark place, but y'all help me. Yeah. But I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, I claim Watts, but I'm really from Gardena. Okay. Uh, my family is from Watts. Yeah. No, I'm really from Gardena, you know what I'm saying? But my cousins is from Watts, and they claim me. And um, Barefoot Boogie would be proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he made it. Yeah. <laughs> Low key. I've been telling everybody, goddamn it, I know the nigga daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Shout out to my parents. My dad is from Compton, uh, and my mother is from Los Angeles. And you know, they they both they both contributed to what you see today. So shout out to them. Definitely, yeah. man. All right, so let's go for let's go all the way back, man. Yeah. Man. How was the childhood? How was your childhood, man? How would you describe that? I would say my childhood is good, but it's funny that you say that because fast forward, I went on Ayala. Y'all know about Ayala yeah, Vincent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, explain me. I don't know what the fuck that is. So Ayala Vincent is this lady who used to be cool with Oprah. Right. But she's like a. Uh, they stopped fucking. Right. <laughs> Set me up. It just came out so free. I was just trying to get to the rest of what I was That shit about to be on TMZ. I'm going to get a little more. I'm going to get a little more. Kevin said Oprah and Ayala was fucking. That shit about to hit the headlines, nigga. About to be on World Star tonight, nigga. No, but it's more to that lady that didn't meet the eye. Like, everything seemed like, oh, you see what Jada Pickett did to the young boy? I'm helping you. I'm fixing your life. But. There really be some other shit going right, on. Right, so right, 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 right. They start trying to put the little magic shit and teach me about shit I didn't really want to learn about it. <laughs> right, 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 right. And uh, she was doing some shit like, in, uh, what's that movie? Uh, and tap the T and oh, uh, get out. She did some shit like that, bro. You think what? she would have made Oprah's feet look like that? Like, <laughs> 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 
fuck up them feet. You'll never be able to wear sandals again, bitch. I promise you that. You stop eating my pussy? No sandals. Yo! But basically, they made me, she made me feel like I had a fucked up childhood at some point but right. I didn't right 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 I had a great childhood it's just it's some things I, I wanted to forget like I lost my virginity at seven but I wanted to do it Shit. I can't explain it I know when it's Mom a girl you know what I'm saying and, but I you know what I'm saying this nigga said he lost his virginity at seven. <laughs> <Two>. <laughs> I've been smoking <laughs> since I was two <laughs> Big Lassie was a little nasty at one point uh, man, that nigga was molested, my oh, nigga. That ain't yeah, sex, nigga. That's molestation, yeah, nigga. That yeah, nigga said two, two nigga. You was getting played with. That. Seven. Six. Anything you remember yeah. at two is traumatic. Right. Because yeah. I don't remember shit from being two. I remember shit three. It, I think three. Are, my, yeah. What yeah. was your three? three? You said three? I, I had some traumatic. Some some early, like earliest five, memory, five, fellas. Five, earliest five, memory. About nine. When well, you come at nine, don't no come come. It's just a dry square. You said four? Yeah, about four years old. That's a dry square. That's, 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 that's when you first put the glasses on at four. <laughs> <laughs> four, okay. Why are you so close like to the TV top? So I, I, I four, three was your earliest memory? Probably like five. Five? I'd say two. Two? God damn. Five? Five? five. Earliest five. memory? Four. Okay. Do you remember what it was? I do. I do. Hey, my dad used to take us to go play uh, the little arcade at the little at the little liquor store on Crenshaw and Venice. They had the little Gallagher, and I remember that shit when I was like goddamn two. Yeah, it, it had to be two. It was my big ass. I was big from the jump. That's probably the last time I got picked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last time you got picked I, up. I know, <laughs> I know you was big, but you wasn't jumping. You're lying like. <laughs> 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 oh, Craig was born with one nostril. <laughs> what was your earliest memory, bro? Early, earliest memory, man. My dad had an old school El Camino, made a left hand turn on the way to my granny house. I fell off the dry, off the passenger seat, out the car. My belt buckle grabbed onto the handle. I was hanging from the handle, looking at the ground rolling. My dad grabbed me, pulled me inside. Damn near shit my pants. That's the first memory. I think I was like four. Yeah. You know what? I, I, my one of mine is. Something like that, but I, I fell out of the car while I was moving. My dad was turn, mm -hmm. turning and shit, so that's great. What about you? What was your early one, Kev? Yeah. One of my first memories, uh, I never been much of a thief, but I was three years old. My mama went in the Vons, Ooh, and when we sick. came out, uh, she just heard somebody smacking in the back seat and be like, what's that smell? What's that fruity smell? And I'm just killing some some uh, Starbursts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's like, you can't steal. Like, you, when you want something, you don't just take it. You, right. you ask or you right. pay or you... And then she just left it in the uh, glove compartment every day from school until it was gone. She let me get one right, if I right. was listening. Yeah, that's one of my first memories. Learning not to steal. Man, <clears throat> we skipped Dozy. We gotta tell us about the village. I thought Dozy. <laughs> 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 nigga says Zamunda, nigga. I hate Charlie, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love you though. Know, tell us about the village. <laughs> nah, it was. Uh, I just remember the, we was it was all of us. We had to stay here and. The lady came in and she whooped somebody. The, the lady who worked there, who was watching us, her mom, it was her like business or whatever. And I just remember her whooping her at the door. Like, I don't know what the fuck she did or didn't do. But like, took kids. So I just remember grabbing my little sister because I was scared. Like, well, let me grab the little the baby. Right. And I was like, so that, I just remember that shit. Like, oh shit, this, this, this lady's getting whooped. The lady who's watching us getting beat. Right. We must be next. Right. <laughs> so I grabbed, ah. I grabbed the youngest kid and I was like, <clears> you know, in the corner with her. But that was it. She just whooped her daughter and then walked off. So I, to this day, I had no clue what the fuck it was for. It's crazy. It's a pattern developing. Your earliest memory. Uh, no. Nah, matter of fact, it was probably like three or four, bro. I got a uh one of them tennis balls, the little small tennis balls. You said sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I put two nah. tennis balls in my pants. Nah, I don't want got... to show bitches I had big balls. <laughs> I was a rubber and plastic. I used to eat rubber and plastic when I was a child. <laughs> so, I was like, bitch, I'm five, but I got big balls. I got these tennis balls in the front. These my real balls, bitch. <laughs> Nigga, stupid. Mine was uh, the little tennis balls or whatever. Um, that made my mom, you know, I was the only child at, like for like nine years. And was playing with these toys, and I put the tennis ball in my nostril. You know what I mean? And, oh, damn. Yeah, the, it was like a little, like a little toy tennis ball. I put it in my nostril. The hard one. Yeah. The gumball machine. Exactly. And my mom had to call the paramedics to get the motherfucker out. Todd, what was your earliest? Damn, nigga said Moses. <laughs> that nigga said Moses, nigga. <laughs> now I guess um, before my sister got sick, like a couple months before she got sick, um, 
she was the oldest, I was the youngest. My my middle brother <laughs> nigga was bullying me and shit and she put the nigga in the police choke till he threw up. So that was my oh, shit. earliest memory. Earliest okay. memory. Okay. Otto, what was yours? <laughs> oh, well, I yeah. caught that. <laughs> well, <laughs> earliest memory for me was I think it was about like oh what, four, three. And you, you said you lost your virginity at two. I it was told to me. Oh, the person oh. who did it told me. What happened? You got fingers. Yeah, you know I fucked you when you. Were <laughs> <laughs> so, you got but, 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 but but no, but I've been trying to no. remind you for years. But niggas been fucking. You didn't right, right, realize right. it, but we been fucking. I used to say, "Bitch, I owe you one." Okay. But the oldest memory was um that I remember was I we were outside and it was this lady who lived across the street. She was like the you know street they said, <laughs> and Dina, on Lundy, and um, she had had you know some alcohol and threw it in in the grass and it caught fire, right? Because she was pissed off at somebody in the house, but she oh, was not but okay. she was asshole naked, oh, and yeah. this was the first snappy nappy dug I've seen in my life. Snappy I swear nappy dug like, like she like big big titties, but she's a base head, but she's asshole base naked just having, t- yeah. having a timber tantrum in the middle of, uh, of my front yard. That was the oldest memory I swear to God. Okay. Awesome. Damn, they said so everybody, but what was your earliest memory, young homie? Probably single mom. Oh, bro. Oh, my bad. Yeah, how old was your earliest memory? I think I was like four. Okay, what was it? Me falling out the back seat and my mom reaching in the back trying to grab me. Okay. <laughs> From okay. coming out there, I was on some... I don't know if I was on some running away type shit. I don't know what I was on. Yeah. I don't know why I opened the back door yeah. and thought I was on some like, but she was on some like, I guess coming out of the parking lot and I didn't have my seatbelt on. Right. And so the door opened. I don't even know how the door opened, but I'm on some like, and she grabbing me from the yeah. back seat, snatching me back in. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, that's yeah. some like, on some early memory stuff. Okay. okay. How old were you? I feel like four, maybe I want to say even six. Like it's kind of like so that happened in 2019. Yeah, he's young. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. okay, yeah, that's, that's all that will go. <laughs> but I think it's interesting how the brain doesn't really let go of trauma. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Because everybody's first experience had some type of traumatic element in it, except uh, the wands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why does the brain hold on to trauma? For such a long time, Dewan. Negativity bias. <laughs> okay, and there's 12 different type of cognitive biases. Mm-hmm. Negativity bias is definitely one. What, explain what a uh, negativity bias is. Negativity bias is basically the brain, like in nature, back in the old days before we was in cities, you know, we'd go places and be like, okay, danger here, danger there. Yes, sir. And the brain would automatically mm-hmm. record that so you won't face that danger again. Right. So it has a bias towards traumatic moments mm-hmm. so you don't have, so you don't go through those experiences again right. and this whole city life is sort of new to us so our brains haven't quite caught up so right. we can have a billion positive experiences two negative ones and we gonna hold right. on to two and then like these niggas go around talking to some everybody's haters you only got matter of fact you ain't got nobody hating on you nigga you work at target right. but <laughs> nigga that, you know you know what i mean but but yeah honey motherfuckers be nice to somebody one person go wrong they get on social media. Why everybody haters? Hey, Negative facts. Bias. That's just like they say. If you see a girl pic on Instagram or something, you get two niggas that say, bitch, you ugly. They're going to pay attention to that those two comments before they even respond oh, yeah. to those hundreds. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? They'll let that fuck up their whole day. Like, But you got to watch it when it comes to those negative experiences because, like I said, there's 12 different cognitive biases, and one of them is called an anchoring bias. You know, and, and, and in sales, uh, we try to prevent an anchoring bias from happening all the time. Like if, if you work at a car lot and somebody comes in to buy a car, you want to keep them off the price of the car. Right. Mm-hmm. Because if they're worried about the total price of the car, then that's going to cap you on what kind of money you can make from them. So you might have people come in and the car may be 30, but you're trying to sell it for 40. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you can't get them to see the $30,000 price because once they anchor on that 30, the forty is gonna seem ridiculous to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And information works the same way. Sometimes we get locked into information, and we think that that's what it is, and it ain't really us. You know what I'm saying? It may be our life experience, huh? What's up? Oh shit! You're telling the nigga Todd to get up. Todd's <laughs> <laughs> like, I ain't getting nothing. <laughs> 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 <Don't> get <laughs> I think it said Todd, get your whole ass out. You ain't hear it, what's that shit, Todd? Get your whole ass out. You still in trying? Y'all hear that shit? The nigga doing that. 
Get <laughs> 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 you your bitch ass up. I just found out these Jordans ain't really Jordans. Fuck it. Jordan ashes, nigga. Jordan ashes. Jordan ashes. I'm fucking with you. No. <laughs> no, but we anchor in the shit that ain't really us. It's just information we learn or an experience that we had, but it's not really who we are. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really mold us. It contributes to who we are, but it's more uh, of you know of a, a, a guidance of how not to have that shit happen to you again. Like he said, the negativity yeah. bias. Mm. Okay, so bam. So early experience was just recap it one more time. It was what? What was the early experience you said? Stealing. Stealing. Man, be for stealing. Okay. All right, most definitely. So, 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 so now we go from you get caught stealing, you learn your lesson there. So, when did you realize that you were a gifted musician or athlete? Like, what, which came first, and when did you realize that? Hmm. Well, see, my family is so talented that it's hard to really. My family is so talented. I'm like one of the least talented people in my family. People don't believe me. Who's the most talented? The most talented person I would have to say is my granny, Grand Muffin, because she the OG. She made all of us. Right. She could sing. She's a teacher. So we was raised by a teacher. I say my granny, but out of the singers, the women, I say my auntie Keisha Bell and my auntie Namisha. I mean my cousin Namisha. Also the whole family. They all sing. You know, if in the ones that felt like singing was a little too sugary or whatever, the game banging niggas they rap. Right, right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you want a gang bang you rap? They can sing though. They can sing. They ain't got, I'm the only one who knows. <laughs> That's so hilarious. It is always one gangbang nigga that is extraordinarily talented. <laughs> oh, like night Nate Dog? Yeah. yeah they be Robbing Taco like Bells and shit. Oh, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> nigga robbed the time. Hey, you can play the violin. Like, come on. <laughs> that nigga got AIDS, but just stop feeling like it. Hell yeah. Real <laughs> shit, though. They call you from the pen singing like a motherfucker, but when they out, they don't do none of that shit. Right. <laughs> so, so my family will have, like, talent shows and stuff. Like, I tried to get my girl to sing the other day for my granny. She wouldn't do it. So we was explaining to her, like, this is what we do. It's a culture. We we don't sing for money. We don't sing. When somebody asks you to sing, you sing. We would like to just enjoy the gift. Right, right, right. So That's, that's a came. beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Duncan, when did you realize you could sing? Because Duncan can sing, but he hardcore. It's so. He be trying to hide it. And Mr. Window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> Shit, I like I was young though. I used to sing with my mom. Just sing like Tina Marie and shit. You know what I'm saying? Aretha Franklin, all that shit, and just singing with her. You know what I'm saying? Learning like songs. Like when you start singing it. nigga songs, shit. Nigga. <laughs> Around Jodeci, nigga trying to get some pussy. On me. <laughs> on me. <laughs> right at Jodeci era, everybody. They, I used to have like I said, my relative, my older relative, nigga used to have the, the Jodeci. Not you know the the book used to come with the lyrics. Nigga they used to write lyrics and letters to bras. Nigga and send them off. Nigga. <laughs> Nigga you know. got a whole Jodeci song, gamed up, don't even know it. Nigga. <laughs> Jojo verse, nigga. I'm like, these niggas are genius. <laughs> so that's when I was thinking, okay, it's power in this shit. That R&B yeah, shit work. Bro. Yeah. Hell yeah. For real. Bro. <laughs> a whole Jojo verse, nigga. So y'all used to have family talent shows at Granny's house? That's we had cool. family talent shows, and um, that's what encouraged me to do it because I wasn't getting out. Not like that, I wasn't getting no attention. It was hard to stand out. So I said, one day, if somebody will listen, I keep practicing and, and I'll do it. Right. And right. the first time somebody else gave me validation was uh, my little white homeboy, Cal, <laughs> in Gardena. When I moved to Gardena from Watts, I had a little white partner. He was down. And then his mom, I had made a tape. I sang Usher uh, nice and slow on the shit. I had a little Man. karaoke machine. I sang the nice and slow and shit. I was showing the little homies. He played it for his mom. So when the white lady was like, Kevin, this is nice. Why are you shit? <laughs> you know, once the white lady, once Becky said it was good, I was like, I, I might have a little future in this shit. Right. He said the live shit ain't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said, I want to watch it in stereo. <laughs> Hey, so did old girl, did, did, did she ask you, like, well, you know, Timmy, have your friends stay the night? Is that going to be, uh... <laughs> no, <after> no. <laughs> my mama's going to beat her ass one day because my mama don't like... She's real kind and giving. She don't like, you know, that fake shit. So one day, it was time for me to go home. So instead of saying go home, she ordered some Domino's, and they just start grubbing. And I'm like, damn, that shit look good. She's like, Kevin, isn't it time for dinner? So I went like back that. home. Yeah, I went back home. She wasn't racist, though. Right. But shit was tight around the house, and I could right. eat. Right, right, right. And they could eat. 
And you know, but my mama would deal with it. But <laughs> yeah. I like, eat your shit. Up. Out when you came to or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. The table's coming over. Let's they, get some watermelon out. Cause the nigga used to let me eat up all the cereal and shit. Oh, I've right. just seen a um a, a meme about this on Instagram, and it made me remember because I forgot. So the nigga pouring cereal, and the mom like, hey. He, uh, Trayvon, can't you go home and eat and da 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 da? I'm like, dang, oh, that is what happened. Damn, I forgot about that. Right, 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 right. So then I remember my mom was like, oh, hell no, we're going back down there. you going to order a piece and you ain't going to feed my baby? Da 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 da. And she told her off. And that just taught me not to be like that. Like, yeah. never be stingy right, and stuff yeah. like that. Like, you know, yeah. when I eat, you going to eat. Right. When I smoke, you going to smoke. Right. That's right. Nice. Whatever it is. That's it, man. Yeah. That's how I was, right? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Share that was seven with your draws, nigga. Uh, everything but your underwear, nigga. Oh, yeah. It is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. Okay, so bam. Um, okay. Damn, what, what, what was the last question I asked you? You was asking when he started singing. When he, oh, when he, he was talented. Up, when he realized he was talented. When he realized he was talented. Okay. So you had the tape. You, Timmy's mom heard the tape. She was like, you can sing. You were singing Usher. Right. Mm. Bam. So did you start taking it seri more serious after that, or did you get more focused on sports? Like, how did somebody validating your talent change your course? It helped a lot because my dad was my football coach, so I thought singing was, was gay. Right. Mm. So I didn't want to sing in front of him. Right. Yeah. But my uncle sang. Right. So I was like, it can't be gay because my Uncle Ronnie, he was in the group, <laughs> <laughs> and he had the afro, and he had the pimp shit, you know. <laughs> He looked like them niggas in the movies with uh, uh, the black exploitation film, yeah, so I right. know he had the hoes. Right. So I used to see how women reacted to my uncle. I was like, that's got to be fly. Right. Then around that age, I also saw Tyrese, right. middle school age. Right. This so, tongue ring Tyrese or this is? This okay. tongue ring Tyrese. This <laughs> 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 one in the lip. This one in the back of the bus. Oh, 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 yeah, that, that ain't a tongue ring. He had this right here. He had a belly ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyrese was a dyke in the nineties. What's up? Shout out to Shaka. What's up, Reese? What's up? Tyrese was a dyke in the nineties. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm hilarious. No, nigga, <laughs> Tyrese is a, is, first of all, he's an LA legend. Yeah, he's from yeah. But we go clown, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Nigga, Cause you had clown, that vest nigga. on, nigga. That vest, no shirt under. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you a superstar, nigga. You know how much pussy I got to. Sweet lady. Man, he was the villain in Usher video. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? He was. Yeah. He was the villain. That's really what hurt his career. Wow. Which is what uh. So this is the, going back into kind of where you're going. I sang at my granny's retirement, eighth grade. Tyrese is basically who got him into the industry. Uh, his name is Reggie Andrews. Reggie Andrews is the band director at Lock High School. If any of you went mm -hmm. to Lock High School, you know about Reggie Andrews and what he did to the music department and how he really just saved a lot of people's lives. Tyrese was one of the people, my cousins. And he saw me when I was little, but once I had sang at my granny's graduation, he was like, you remind me of Ty. So he took me under his wing, and I was going to go to Lock High School in the summer. Right. Problem was, I was going to be my freshman year at Carson High to play football. Right. And he was a beast on the field. I was a beast on the field, but I was only 5'7", 130 pounds my freshman year. Right. Oh. And I went there with all them Samoans. Right. Them, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I wasn't as fast as, because I ran track my whole life with Obi Moore and... Yeah, I'll be for my, for my son. Exactly. <laughs> you were, and I ran with the LA Jets. But everybody caught up in high school. So then I had a choice. Reggie was like, look, man, your dad kind of tripping about this music shit. He kind of, he ain't finna let you go to summer school here. He, he said you got to choose. My dad was like, look, you want to do music, nigga, or you want to play football? Right. And I felt like my whole, my love and everything depended on me playing football for my dad to love right. me. It That's wasn't true. Saying. Right, right. But... But, you know, at, at that age, you know, if, if you have a son or a daughter out there, you can't put that type of pressure on them. You got to you gotta figure out what they like. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, unless you're seven foot and, right. and right. 13, yeah. right. you know what I'm saying, basketball. and you want a skateboard. Right. And I'm like, nah, nigga, that fu your foot bigger than the skateboard. Nah, we're not doing it. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's a lot of pressure to put on the kid because that can cause an error in perception. Yeah. You know what I mean? T yeah. Talk about the kind of pressure that may, that, that may be to a child. 
Cause like when a kid has multiple like loves, it's like taking one love away. You know what I mean? Right. And you don't. You gotta let them choose. You know what I mean? You gotta let them follow mm. their passion and their heart. Because when you take something away, that can get an internal bitterness towards the person who took it away. Trauma, hell of trauma. And then you have end up having relationship issues with that parent that did it or right. uncle, and then not even understand why you don't like that motherfucker at thirty one. Mm. They say some shit crazy. You triggered. Right. Not Definitely. even understanding it because they made you choose back when you was fourteen. I was a hell of a baseball player. I was probably a better natural baseball player than any other sport. And I was a high-level hooper, and I had football talent, too. But baseball, I felt like I had prodigy type of talent. You know what I'm saying? a lot of money in baseball. Man, but I would never forget. I was in the fourth grade, and I was playing up, like, on the sixth, seventh grade travel ball team. And I got in trouble in school, and I really loved baseball. And Pop just snatched me out. And cussed me out, nigga. You grades is fucked up, but he didn't really sit down with me exactly. and really explain. Okay, your grades is fucked up. This is how you get them up. Yeah. And this is what you need to do. I just felt stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So I started hooping by default because all I needed was a ball. Damn. You know, baseball is a sport. You need pops. Right. right, right. Yeah. So pops for like a year. He never said fuck me because I had a good pops, but he wasn't really fucking with me because he mad. He was mad my grade slip. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got into to, to b ball by default. I feel like the family. Be filthy rich if he would have just kept me in baseball and explained to me like nigga this is why this is what you need to do right. so yeah that's a, that, okay so now we're that's crazy okay so now we choose football we at Carson High yeah okay so how's that like how's that experience like from Y two K I remember that nigga yeah I remember, yeah yeah that's my senior year two thousand oh yeah hell yeah I, I remember that vividly god damn yeah, so, so freshman year starts off pops is the O coordinator on varsity or yeah on freshman? he 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 stayed with me. He okay. was with a, uh, they call it Fresh Soft. Frost yeah, Frost Soft. Yeah. Frost Soft, he was with that. Right, right. And then right. when I moved up, he moved up. So you mm-hmm. played tailback on the freshman team? I played tailback. Killing? We, no, nah, we had some cold ass running backs. Oh, man. And I was 5'7, 130, so I was I was a small fry. Right, right. Um, the next year, I, I got a little bigger. But by my junior year, I was like 180. I was like 6 feet, 180. Okay. By my junior year, Certified I got bigger. Beast. Yeah, but um, I, ch- I chose the, the football because I felt like my dad tricked me. He got me working out. And right. Since once I started getting size, I was like, oh, I like this shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be a swole nigga walking around campus, and it kind of worked. Right. In reverse. And then he also was like, he never wanted me to get to the NFL, per se, or this. He would always say, really, I just want you to get your education. Right. And I did that. I got to college, but I see why it made me play that, that much because I wouldn't have been able to afford that. Well, t- well, tell us tell us something you told us off air, which I thought was really important <clears throat> about how pops wouldn't play you. Right. I, I I didn't get it at first, but my whole entire career, especially my senior year when I was probably in my prime, he wouldn't play me to the second quarter. And we had a uh, we used to run the wing tee, which means it's going to be three tailbacks in the backfield at the same time. Right. But I still wasn't one, none of them. I was on the sideline most of the time. And what that did was it made me hungry. And it made me, um, it made my stats look better because with less, I'm producing more. Right. You know, and it also showed the parents because a lot of parents would call my dad out on favoritism, but it wasn't really favoritism. So he went over and beyond to show, look, I'm going to let my son prove that he should be playing. And then when I got to college and they, they would have me on the sideline and shit, I was kind of used to it because my dad had did it. Right. So uh, along that entire journey in high school, we'll stick in high school for now, yeah. were you still singing and creating on the side? Yeah. I was doing music, but again, it was, it was I kept it on the low. But once I got into my senior year, um, I started doing talent shows and stuff like that. One a talent show, I'm like, wow. Only other time people said I was doing well was in church. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was starting to sing in church a lot more, but at church they was being haters. Right. They oh, didn't want to let they me. They was hating in the church. There ain't no way oh, they hate. No, they the hating church. the church. They hating you know the church because because it's good people and bad people and everything. Right. So first I wanted to play the drums. Nigga didn't want them to play the drums. It's, he need his solo. So I, they didn't let me sing and stuff like that. But once I was singing at school, the girls was liking it. And I did it for the hoes. I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did don't it for the hoes. Understand how hard it is to crack the church band. <laughs> that ain't no easy feat when you're a teenager. Huh? I, and, what, and what was the ride home like when your dad wouldn't play you? Like, how did that make you feel? Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, one of the coldest ride homes is my dad used to try to make me do shit. Like, uh, he didn't like me having friends who weren't star athletes and shit like that. Uh-huh. So, no, no, for real. What? So I'll be a friend with a nigga that's like the, the runt too. 
Right. You know what I mean? I'm friends with everybody. So this happened twice. This happened in Pop Warner and in high school. Oh, that's weird. In Pop Warner, it was a nigga. The nigga would look like he was like in first grade. But we, in middle school, I'm like, I'm not hitting this nigga. <laughs> the drill was you lay him at the helmet, right? Right, right. Boy, I, I know, know that's You blow the whistle, yeah, you get you up. Get up and get him. And you, I'm not hitting this little nigga. Right, man. right, right. He's like, okay, if you don't hit him, the whole team going to hit you. So he put us in the bull, a bull ring. Put the whole team up. I got to I gotta do my feet. And that's the first time my daddy called me a bitch. I was like, what, nigga? Mm-hmm. You called me a what? <laughs> Circle yeah. this motherfucker. Oh, you start right, calling right. the numbers. Bah! I'm letting niggas have it. Bah! Bah! Then he going to put me to the side on the ride home. He like, I shouldn't have to get you mad to make you aggressive. I'm like, you an evil motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> damn. You an evil motherfucker, but I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted me to have controlled aggression. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Dude. I didn't get it though. Even to this year, I now get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's deep. Yeah, stay dangerous. That's one of the that's you gotta one be of ready. Things like, man, you gotta get you mad to. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Because once you get mad, you're not in control. Right. Facts. That's so why they say when you box, you gotta be controlled, or when you fight, you gotta be controlled. Because when you mad, you gonna get your ass whooped. <laughs> wow. So we got we junior senior year now. You start to have some success on the field. How do you feel that changed your perspective and your outlook on life when you went from being the freshman who wasn't really getting a lot of run because you had a lot of, you know, athletes on the team. Maybe sophomore year got a little better, but now junior, senior year, you're starting to kind of really shine and get recruited. How do you feel that changed your perspective? They're starting to put you in the daily breeze. You're starting to see your name and, you know, the local papers and stuff like that. And uh, what was the what was the sports? It was, what was it? Oh, um, sports. Die Sports, or yeah. Fox Sports back in the day. What is it? Was it Fox Sports West? But that too, being on those sh- on on Fox yeah, Sports West. Back there. Before that, was like it was on KK Nine. Prime Tips, all, all that type of stuff. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so you used to you used to. Yeah, that'd be talking about. Cal oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I started feeling like I was kind of getting close to being close to the family name because I come from my dad got six brothers. Right. They all played college ball. Then I had Carlos McCall, who he played against Patrick McCall. Phenomenal backs, and I'm I'm not half as good as them. Right. But to see my name, Kevin McCall, you know, it felt great. I was right. like, I'm on my way. Maybe I should, I should try a little harder. And I gave it my all, and I still didn't get any offers, even past the mark where you're supposed to get offers sent in and shit like yeah. that. Right. I didn't have no offers. One of the star DNs, his name was Matthew Malele. Anybody know the Malele boys? In, Carson, phenomenal Samoans. They huge and they make massive athletes. He was the only one really got to look like that. He went to Cal. Didn't have grades, but he went to Cal. Right. Oh, he played with Ja. Yeah. Ja, Ja went to Cal? Right. Big Ja went to Cal, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. I he, know why he, he, he thought he went to Beast Mode and all them. He was a little older. But I yeah. took Beast Mode on his recruiting trip to Wazoo and I was so happy he didn't go there. <laughs> I was like, this nigga finna take my spot. <laughs> <laughs> and Jonathan Stewart. <laughs> The only reason Jonathan Stewart didn't come to our school because he wanted to do music too. He a music nigga too. Yeah, that's right. I was like, damn, this nigga finna take my spot. He loving it too. Yeah, he yeah, from yeah. here. Yeah. Saw some niggas smoking weed. He's like, they be smoking weed. I was like, you don't like weed? He's like, they be sm-. I was like, them niggas be blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I seen Jonathan Stewart, Carolina yeah. Panthers, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ducks. I wanted to ask you, man, how were you? Were you able to make an easy transition? Did you use that work ethic from sports over into music? That was good. I'm, I'm trying to follow your, your yeah. We your, getting there. We getting there. Yeah. We gonna get there. But I definitely did. It was like, like he said, with the standing on the sideline, not playing me to the end. When these niggas start playing with my contracts and not letting my music come out and and, and, and just trying to impede on the word of mouth of getting my talent out there. I, I, I dealt with it before. Right. But I know you got to stay ready because when it's right when it's that time, if they put you in the game and you ain't been warmed up, you're going to look, this is why I ain't played him. Right. Like they did Kwame. Look, you all right. the nigga out two hours before the game. Nigga tired. And you throw him in. Right. Yeah, he going to do little, you know what I'm saying? Right. So Them college coaches. They evil. They, 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 they evil, so yeah. treacherous. If you ain't played college ball, you do not understand. Man. Whole- I've seen... Niggas who were clearly better, better, bro, sit the bench. Politics, because of politics. Oh, yeah, I mean, the, I, I feel like the whole thing, the whole college setup is fucked up anyway. Because it's like you got these kids broke, 
<laughs> nigga, and you selling these motherfucking jerseys? Like, bro, you could like at least get them niggas a check for their own fucking name. Right. Even like, how many times you played for a college college coach and he just had to have that prototypical white boy point guard? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't. He can't see you running the point. Like, what do you, what do you mean? His like, parents I mean, was probably the book. The uh, what you call it? Boosters. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah, that's how that went. But thank you, bro. Boosters. So so okay so now we you know so so how does the scholarship to to Wazoo come about? I'm about to go to Compton City College because I didn't I didn't get any offers. <laughs> Coach Ward is up at Com Compton City College. I mean, uh, is it called Compton Community College? Yeah, that's Compton. Yeah. It's Compton. It's Compton College, nigga. Bunch of a bunch of <laughs> bunch of a bunch of coaches come out there, and I'm about to go to this college, and he's just trying to big me up. Like, yeah, this is McCall from Carson. He about to come here. Mm. He bigging me up so much as this guy's about to come here. The Washington State recruit is right there watching. The Washington State recruit is Kelly Skipper, who ended up being an um, offense coordinator at for the Raiders. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kelly Skipper was a fan of my father when he played for the Oregon Ducks in 85. Right, right. Kelly Skipper's father was my dad's running back coach. Yeah. Whatever. So my dad was hard, and Kelly Skipper used to hang out with my pops. Now you fast four years later, it's like, you know, the, the reincarnation of my pops at this college. He was like, well, let me see the film on him. Let me, what's, what's his time? So I was running a 10-5 in a 100, um, and I didn't even make state. Right. Yeah. Like, like, Matt Bruno was running that year. Uh, Reggie Bush, he burnt us in the 4x4. Four four. Mm, yeah. But we won the 4x1. Right. I was the anchor. So that made us look well because I was the anchor on that. My 40 was a 4-3-8. Right. Which was blazing, yeah, you know. So pushing, my speed was was uh what they would say um kind of like Eddie George, where you don't look like you're running as hard, right? But right. you are, right? You right? Know? Right? My style was a lot like Eddie George, so the coach gave me a chance. I went and did a, a visit to Washington State, and it wasn't really an official one, but they ended up they had one scholarship left, and they gave it to me, and I oh. got to meet your boy Jonathan. Jason David. Yeah, Jay, that's my boy. Yeah. Hamza Abdullah, and it was like, yeah, you should come here. Yeah. I didn't want to go nowhere else after I went to that school on that trip. That's dope, man. So yeah. you get to Wazoo, you know, it's feeling like a family. Hell so, no. No, it wasn't feeling like a family. Okay. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about that. First year at Wazoo, what happened? I mean, what, what's going on there? Well, the way the game goes is they, the coaches come out to your house, they butter you up with your parents. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, they, Give you so much attention, attention your daddy never gave you. Yeah, yeah. And you know, some of them dudes ain't got no dad, so it's like mm -hmm. it's a lot of attention. And you like, wow. And then when you get there, they act like you don't, they don't know you. Man, you know, damn, like that. But I Hell also yeah, know that once you start producing, even the whole school will start paying attention to you. The whole locker room, hey McCall, hey, if you're getting a touchdown, but if you get hurt, you get a high ankle sprain. It's, nobody know you no more. In the locker room, though. Right, right. Damn. And the trainers who tape your ankle, I'm not taping your ankle. We ain't got no more tape, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and some people would do that. Clean at the end of the game, nigga. <laughs> but it was certain people who always treated me like they just knew I was. I had something in there. Right. And one of my coaches was uh, Coach David Lang. I used to think the nigga hated me. I thought he was a racist white dude. He's like, it's your genes. Like, you got the most potential in here. And I, I yell at you. I, you notice I don't yell at everybody. I feel like you could just, if you work hard, you could do a lot of things. You could be a bodybuilder. Fuck football. Right. I was like, I fuck with you. Like, at least you're telling me positive things, you know? Right, right, you know, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was certain people who, through the politics, because I ended up getting the case my sophomore year. Okay. Was it my freshman year? Sophomore year. Cause I was 19 still, so right. it must have been my freshman year. Even though I beat the case, the school policy is you're not supposed to be in this girl dorm. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's a zero tolerance. You're supposed to get kicked out. They allow me to stay, but the politics on it was just like the optics. This guy had a a rape case. Right, I beat it, but we're not gonna let you start. Right, and none of my coaches would tell me for like four years. I thought I had a fumbling problem. Right, and it was making me have a fumbling problem because yeah. like, you keep fumbling. That's why we ain't starting you. We was from the start you, but did it. I'm like, damn. But now y'all starting to make me fumble. Yeah, yeah is it the sure. rain? I'm like, fuck. Right, right, right. I could never get my rhythm. And then one time, that's why I love you, Coach Broussard, because you you broke you broke out of that that mold. He he, It's like he woke, broke me out of the Matrix. Right, right, right. Because I was already reading books like $40 Million Slave. Right, right, right. My coaches hated it. My, uh, my minor was ethnic studies, so I'm learning about 
just mm-hmm. stuff that don't make sense. Yeah. And the coaches hated it. Winning talent shows, singing and stuff. They're like, we don't like you singing. We brought you here to do football, not to learn. Yeah. Brought not you to learn. To, yeah. We brought you here to play football. So I was like, dang, I got to be smarter about how I'm moving. But Coach Broussard was like, look, Kev, they didn't want you to start this Cal game against Deshaun Jackson. I, right. They didn't want me to start. They wanted to go all spread the whole game. He said, I went to bat with you. He's like, the reason this shit is going on is because the boosters told them they can't do that. Hmm. Wow. So I was like, wow. Yeah. You could have ruined my whole. Right. So then I just gave up on football anyway. I was like, I don't want to deal with that nowhere else. If my working my hardest ain't enough. Right. Uh, I, I don't want to do that. How did the, how did the being accused of the rape case that you didn't you know that that, that you know that you didn't do or whatever? Yeah. How did that affect your psyche? Did did that make you distrustful of folks? Like how did that change the way you perceive women in general? Uh, it just made me watch what I do. Right. I learned that your words could make somebody want to say you did this, that. Even if it's like domestic violence, I've had domestic violence rumors. Just, just don't make a woman feel like that way, where she feel like she got to say that about you. Right. Right. But luckily, if you if you're a person who really got good character, people people believed me. Right. My right. coaches believed me. My I never forget. I was surprised because one of the um, star players was this white dude named Will Durden. I thought he was racist. Right. I thought he never liked me or nothing. And he called a team meeting amongst ourselves, and he he hugged me and stuff. He's like, "We believe you, and we know your heart. We know you wouldn't do that." Right. 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 That, that shit made me cry because I I thought everybody would just believe the girl. Right. And well, um, Washington is a treacherous place yeah. when it comes to shit like that i know of three different people who were all accused and acquitted in the state of washington you know i don't know if it was a white girl on your behalf but i know the other dudes i know it was a white girl and they were black and they they damn near ruined some lives nigga what are these niggas saying tonight? for real they damn near ruined some you lives thought everybody was racist i yeah. did i never grew up around white people like that no nah, man washington you them woo. Yeah. But uh, okay, it, so it bam. was cool. So the team rallied around you, but at that point, so now you're thinking, man, with with the boosters being against me, you know what I'm saying? The case and all this other shit is feeling like football don't love a nigga. Yeah, yeah. So so now you start to 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 basically dive into your music. Yes, and that made everybody love me. Man. Even the girl who was accusing me, she she became a fan and she started. Eesh. Learning my songs and sending it to me. Yeah. 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 No, for real. Yeah. For real. Yeah. 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 It really was. Bitch, you did what? It really was her. Un- that's the that's thing correct, about the bro. snowball effect. Like when it's people in your ear, whether it's you know your 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 baby mom want to put you on child support, whatever it is, it'd be people in their ear. Yeah. So her un- her auntie got on there and took the stand and she had got raped and she said they just let him go or whatever happened with her i could tell how she was acting something happened right and i'm like dang baby we didn't do that though right but like the judge said he was like ma'am i'm not finna put him in jail for some he's not here for a rape case he's here for a assault case for right. a degree assault case so i'm not gonna put him in there for that right he's admitting to what he's done but mr Carr, you, you actually don't you're not showing no remorse. Right. It's one thing I didn't do. Like, dang, I shouldn't have caught you a bitch. And just right. Never thought of that. Right. Nigga gave me 50 days. Man. Mm, I had to do 25, and I had to do it on the weekends. But oh, right. it's See, still, I'll be I like, still. Hey, let me just get the whole 25. Man, exactly. Man. Come back to this. I mean, you going to take all these Saturdays away from a nigga. <laughs> 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 it's like 25 Saturdays, nigga. Oh, that's a lot of that's Saturday. Saturday. Like, what I'll do it. You let me call Saturday. a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that was fresh. That was fresh. That was that was sophomore year. Right, right, right. Okay. And then you go into the, getting into the senior year. Okay, y'all let me start. Y'all didn't really want me to start. So I see this is all a facade and all that. So I'm focused on music. I and they basically took games away from you. Hell yeah, nigga. 20, 25 days. No, it's twelve because the Sunday's two. So it's the weekends. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm no, saying. No, no, no. It was in the summer. Oh, it was in the summer. summer. Okay, all right. Cool, cool. Oh, and oh. Dwight Tardy, Chris Ivory, Chris Broom. Jonathan Smith, y'all know y'all niggas was better than me. Y'all niggas was hard. Yeah. Had some hard niggas. It was comp- it was competition, but it just wasn't a thing for me. I had an opportunity to play with the Raiders because my coach right. was a uh, ended up being the offense line coordinator or something. The right. same dude who got me to Washington State. Yeah. Mm. So 
I just told my dad, man, I'm not fucking with this music shit, you know. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Damn. Okay. I mean, I'm not fuck with Fuck, the football, football shit. right, right. Yeah. So, so it is you know that 25 day weekend stint is. Did you create any music in that in that time frame? Yeah. First of all, my dad held it down for me. Good looking pops. He cleared the savings, came out there and mm-hmm. paid for my lawyer and all that. Yeah. yeah man, that so. was some real shit, pops. Yeah, good, good looking. looking. That, pops. Uh, I wrote hella music. Some did of the. You, did you write any songs that became big hits during that time? Not at. Not at that time. It became hits around the school. Okay, all right. And it became sh- shit that I'm still u- I'm still using them songs right now and rewriting them. And people think it's new stuff. Mm. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But I, I put it on a, a mixtape like 10 years after, and uh, that blew up. It was a song. C- see, I hate it. Because <laughs> I wrote this in jail, so I <laughs> This is my cousin be getting on me. I wrote a song called Touch You. <laughs> I was thinking about like, the business. Who is this nigga talking to? Nigga, hey, niggas be in jail. Say, so sing that touch shit. Sing it one more time. Come on, man. The girl wrote him a letter like, are you talking about me again? Nah, I ain't talking about you. Hey, you wasn't like singing along as you wrote, touch you. That ain't right. I got to yeah, you gotta write it like that. <laughs> no, I remember it was a uh, I met a, a dude from the KKK in there, and he used to take a shower with his sock on, and I never knew why. And then he finally showed me. He was like, "Well, I thought you would beat my ass because he had a swastika on his calf." But he said he, he didn't fuck with that no more. And he was like, "You're a big kid. You that buff running back kid from Washington." And I just didn't want no disrespect. I was like, "Man, I ain't gonna beat you up for that." Damn, uh, you not gonna are... even be in the shower when you in the shower, nigga. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, that, fight the shower. That's hey, the hey, yeah, 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 yeah. hey, real shit. That's if it. that nigga was in the pen with you, he would not have been in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nigga, your, nigga, your, nigga, your polo got a zipper, nigga. <laughs> that, that, that nigga shirt look like bad TV programming, nigga. <laughs> Turn that bitch on channel three, nigga. Uh, there you go, nigga. But, yeah, uh, okay, so so okay, so you do that twenty five days, yeah. you get out, and now you just focus fully on music, or what's that? What's the, what's the next part of your life like at school? They don't know it, but I'm focused fully on music. I ain't even tripping on school no more like that. Right. Because I started pledging. My grades was good the whole time I pledged, but then halfway through the shit, I'm like, dang, I'm really teaching myself everything. Like, mm. who did you pledge? I, Oh, I pledge Omega Sci-Fi. Cute. In 2006, which we could talk about later too. I denounced my frat too. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, because I got I got really hip into uh, Steve. Is it Chris Copley or Steve, Steve Copley? Steve Copley and, and yes. stuff like that, and the information I got, I just I ain't need to be belong to nothing. Right. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Steve Copley, yeah. that nigga. Huh? If you fuck with me, you fuck with me. Okay, so let's huh? go back. First hit that you created. That you actually sold, because I know you created the hit right. and you sold it a little while later. Right. But in the process of making it, tell us what that first hit was, and did, did you have an idea that this would be something that would be major, that somebody would probably buy off you one day or make you famous? Okay. I'm trying to do the short version. I got kicked out of my dad's house in Gardena because I didn't want to go to the, uh, what's that little facility they got in the Home Depot Center? Yeah. He was going to pay for me to do a facility to get a workout with the Raiders. Right. I'm like, bro, save your money. I don't want to do it. He was like, well, you got to get the fuck out. Because I was like, man, I just, I met this dude who know Chris Brown. I promise you. I don't know Chris Brown, but I met this dude who know him. I know some people. Right. Specifically Chris Brown, too. Right, right, right. And I wasn't per se a Chris Brown friend, but my fan, but my sister, and, and my sister was a little girl who always liked me. Right. She got an ear for talent. Fast forward, my dad kicked me out. We almost catch a fade over it because... I had met Chris Brown the day before our first time. I was writing a song for uh, Jerry Rice's daughter. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jerry Rice has a daughter named Quee Rice. And this writer, he would write for people like that, too. He'd get the bag. You right. might get it from Chris Brown the label, but if it's Jerry Rice, he's going to get that Jerry Rice bag, too. I'm going to yeah. do your Let me do your daughter whole project. Yeah, yeah. So he just brought the little nigga who make beats along, and she ended up liking my beats. He gave me some bread up out of it. Chris Brown walks in. I'm like, oh, shit. After I meet him, I said, I'm going to make some beats. My dad didn't believe me. Comes in the house, see me hanging out with my cousin that 
was gang banging, and he ain't like me hanging with him, so he unplugged my shit, erased all the beats. Oh! oh. Erased, erased all the beats. Man. It was one of the most fires beats. You know how to get to the... It was it got erased. Oh, he knew how to erase it though. That's the no. When he once he unplugged it, I was on a Triton. Yeah. I don't know about if y'all know about a Triton Triton oh. keyboard. So I didn't get a computer to two years ago. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know. He didn't know. Yeah, Triton, you definitely. Have so to I, yeah. Every sound yeah. of that motherfucker. I literally fought with my dad over that, oh and that's when I knew. That's when he knew. That's when I knew. That's when everybody knew. This is what I really love to do because I would never go against my dad like that, especially right. in his own house. Of, you know, but I felt like I was right. Right. So he didn't believe me that I knew Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, I ended up meeting a crump dancer. Yeah. My frat brother, his name is Gerardus Ratty. He ended up, in, he invented crump dancing back in the day. Yeah. So don't laugh at me. I used to be real into crumping back in the day. Yeah, I used right. to think I did shit. Sure. You know what I'm saying? At least you get paid for that still. It's today. funny, yeah, though. You know, I'm talking about tight eyes. Yeah, tied eyes and all that shit. We yeah, yeah. want to be clowns. And I was really heavy into that all the way deep into college. I took it all the way into college. I was known. This nigga still dressed like a crump. <laughs> 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 crump. 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 Break it off down. Like crump. a pirate crump. Oh, nigga, yeah. fuck you, nigga. <laughs> nigga, you wearing a Carl Kanai oh, shirt, nigga. I nigga. Oh, oh, nigga. Oh, oh, this oh, nigga got the. I nigga got a Carl <laughs> I got a good twist of the story. You know how you got that whole gay mafia thing. Right, just shut to myself. Look at that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So the first person who got me in the industry, he was more on that side. But the nigga, the way I met him at the gym, the nigga <laughs> hooping and shit. But he'd do some, he'd like hit a three on you, be like, bitch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the nigga, the nigga, some of y'all niggas know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I say, don't say his name. Don't post a nigga up. Post anyway, it. niggas know who I'm <laughs> talking about. This nigga said, really cool. Right, I already know you're talking about the Hawthorne uh, 24 hour fitness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's where he used to be at. 120. Yeah, well, he used to be there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this nigga was like, I guess he met Chris Brown because you know Chris be on the hoop and shit too. Yeah, he could hoop like a motherfucker. So that's how he got close with Chris, even though he a little sugary. Right. He could hoop. Told Chris he could write. He ended up writing uh, forever. You yeah. know that double mint commercial shit? Yeah. yeah. So okay. this nigga I met in college on MySpace yeah. with the sugary basketball moves, he ended up writing <laughs> for Chris. Right. So <laughs> once we was. Once, once, once I was writing for uh, Jay Rice's daughter right. and Chris. Catch? Can she catch? It's hilarious. Shout out to Queen. Shout out to Queen. She's beautiful too. I know she gotta be. Once I met Chris, the nigga would start trying to like cock block pause. Yeah. But he was just like, oh, you a groupie. You over there trying to kick it with Chris and da 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 da. And I'm like, actually, nigga, I know this nigga through a whole nother person. Right. I had met Chris through my frat brother who invented crump dancer. His name is Jordis Reddy. He invented crumb dance. There's only three people who invented it. Right. So everybody who crumb dance know who Joe Artis is. Big right. Miho. Right. Big Miho, little brother is Chris Brown's best friend. Right. So one day I'm hanging out with Big Miho. He takes me to meet Chris Brown. We doing all that Q Dog shit, hopping and yeah. Chris just loves it. He just loves the energy. And like, man, you, I fuck with you. See me at the studio again. I'm with the sugary dude. Right. He buff. Who? Like, he ain't buff. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. He's skinny dude. What do you want? What do you want? I mean, what size shooting nigga? I'm just trying to identify because we've been in the same party in the same room. What do you want to say? Do you got a nice body? Yeah. 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 That nigga Vignette right. said he got a friend. The nigga said he got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but one one thing we skipped over. I want to. Uh, we're gonna come back right back to where we are. Pops unplugging the computer. Man, uh, the the tray. <laughs> you fighting pops. Man, he kicked you out the crib. Yeah. Okay, so talk about what frame of mind did that <clears throat> put you? Kind of put you in because I kind of felt like that was your coming of age in a way. Yeah, yeah, we skipped over a little bit. You right? Yeah, yeah. That made me kind of, that was my manhood. That was me turning into a man. I was like, you know, a lot of black men, we don't have no crossing the, 
what's it called? A, a, a crossing. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. A coming of passage of rites of passage. Rites of passage. Rites we don't have a rites of passage. We don't have. We don't have no sweet 16. We don't have no bar mitzvah. Well, the sugary nigga probably had a sweet 16. That's his thing. That nigga had a sweet 13, nigga. <laughs> yes, yeah, so all you young writers, you watch out for that. You better know yourself. I mean, or if you into it, do your thing, you know. So, so yeah, cause that kind of do you do do any of you guys remember your coming of age moment? Yeah, it was one of them type moments to where shit. Like I had a studio in my pops. I was like the same situation, doing the doing the the, the basketball, football. You want to box? What are you finna do? My pops a boxer. He was pushing that. I was like, nah, nigga, I ain't finna get hit in my head for a living. Fuck that. That shit hurt, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like I loved it, but it, it wasn't my it wasn't my passion. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, well, you ain't finna. What, what you finna do? Well, like nigga, I'm on this music, nigga. I had a little studio in the, in the garage downstairs. Nigga, one day I woke up, that nigga knocked all that shit down, nigga. No, Mike Stan A thing, nigga. Mm -hmm. So me and him had the same situation. We got Wait, to so you worked into this? Yeah, no. I, I came home, nigga. You asked for the fame? I, I had to. We got to get in. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you know, but the feeling, like, like you know, as a young man, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, everything is in there. I bought, like, I, nigga, I was... Bar and shit, bartering niggas. Oh, I do this beat. Let me get that beat machine. Right. It was that type of situation. Oh, you so know, you you put, owned it, yeah. nigga. I'm like, nigga, all this shit oh, on the shit. ground. I forgot how the homie hooked up the MP all type uh, shit. He just snatched all yeah. that shit out. I'm like, bro, why did you? What's <laughs> going on, nigga? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nigga, I look at this shit like, what the Is fuck? Is your marriage not right, nigga? Nigga, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like nigga, you ain't here with the whoop. Y'all niggas smoking with you. Better get the with you. I'm like, nigga, we got to get down right now, nigga. <laughs> nigga, tell them my backpack. So nigga, Jack, what's happening? Paul, you got to get down. What's, for real, though. Because at this point, it's like, if I don't stand up for myself now, I ain't going to never be no man, nigga. Yeah. You're going you to be a bitch until you're at least 30. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you don't stand up for yourself in your, in your early teens as a man, you have to do it, brothers, with your pops. A homie you scared of, or, right. it's always a D-boy around your ass. So, you want to fight? Right. Now, wait, no, I wasn't no fight. That nigga want to get down. He Try. seen I was passionate about that. When you see a nigga really mad like that, yeah. and he know I've been training, this odd nigga, you <laughs> box, but I'm, I'm training now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're going to have to get down. So, he's like, man, we would my call my auntie, all types of shit. But it's like, but I had to show a nigga, like, hey, man, I'm really serious about this shit. Then ever since then, you know what I'm saying, niggas tried to really get involved in it, but. You gotta set precedent, bro, and, yeah, and let niggas know you willing to go there. Whooped me though. Looking back, like, <laughs> I felt the win on that left. I was like, I don't oh, even yeah, want to yeah. hurt you, homie. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you y'all remember that move? Like, man, I don't even want to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goody, nigga. You're right, me. Right, was shaking bro. like a motherfucker. <laughs> hey, Charlie, that question you asked earlier, you you, you remember it? Yeah. <laughs> the one when I asked him about yeah. the transition from yeah, your, your work ethic, your work ethic transition from sports to the mic, the mic. And tell us about your work ethic transition from um, from music to sports. It was funny because when I first got there, I was real mature, and the coaches had to put me with like drunk older people, the running backs that was kind of Jonathan Smith, you know, mm -hmm. Hamza Abdullah, because I was immature. I play a lot, and. um just being around them type of dudes, I start seeing why they were so serious. It's all they had. The Abdullah brothers, they used to do Ramadan during the season. They had to take IVs because they couldn't eat the food with us. Oh, mm -hmm. So they had to take IVs before the game. So I just they seen went to Crenshaw, right? No, they went to Pomona. Pomona, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. you're right. They, they went from there Pomona. With, uh, my boy, uh, damn, uh, he was so ill. We was just talking about him the other day. Played for the Niners. Uh. uh not Jason David. Not Jason David. He went to Charter Oak. Damn. Went to Mount Sac. Was supposed to go to Essendon. No. Not Champ. Out of LA school. No. I remember. We played with the Abdullah brothers, though. Yeah, they all played at Pomona. They had four people from that team go lead. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. And just seeing even just people like that, like the most fastest players or the most strongest players didn't necessarily make it to the leagues. The one I seen make it to the league. I seen them really take that weight room serious. When we was done in the weight room, they was still in there. Eric Coleman. Uh, I'm just throwing out names so when y'all see this, you know, salute. Mm -hmm. But uh, them niggas, like, really took this shit to another level. To, it was what you was required to do, and then they did the extra shit. Right. And then they also watched that film. So right. this is an interesting fact. I didn't understand the concept of football until my junior year. Right, right. So the whole time I got a scholarship and everything, I was like Forrest Gump. Right. Just run that way, just yeah. 
and I, I got a scholarship like that, but you couldn't, I couldn't progress. Mm. And I, it was all because I was so scared to say, well, what I'm doing wrong? Like, what, what is the, what is two minute warning? What's the red zone? Like, right, 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 right. Because my dad's gonna be like, nigga, you, <laughs> yeah. college, how you don't, yeah. how you don't know that? Right, right, right. But the other coach sat down, didn't assume we knew shit, broke it down. Yeah. So now I take that into life. I break down my, my, my break down my contract. I break down my talking points before I'm gonna go somewhere. I study my opponent. I study, okay, who's Chris Brown? Who's his attorney? I know who his attorneys are now. I know everybody in this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah. study things. Uh, the work ethic. Niggas wanna wait till they gotta go to court to wear a suit. Right. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, every day I go to, every week I'm doing something. So I try to pretend like it's game day. Like that's what I like about the NBA people. They they had to wear suits. Right. I think on the on the court and all that. I mean, yeah, yeah, to come, come into the games, yeah. So I was like, I want to start a charity. This is new. This is something I'm doing now, because I noticed I just start getting my homeboys suits all the time. That's my way of giving you your flowers. Like I got homeboys who got like maybe somebody graduated. My homeboy had child custody court. Right. I wanted him to look right. My boy Rashad. So I start coming in there so much to do is like, man, you know what? Maybe you should start a, a charity giving back. Because when I'm in a suit, I feel more, less like the stuff they try to label me with. Right, right, right. I right, know right. I got these tattoos and shit because this was when I first felt like I was an outcast. I got to do music. Y'all label me woman beater, all this shit that I'm not. Right. Well, fuck it. I'm going to just be that. I'm going to be like Tupac and Juice. Right. But now I got to get the shit erased. So right, right, right. Even if you did make this mistake, you could clean up, you could wear a suit, and you could you could carry yourself like a man. Right, you know, right. talk. I'm with that 100%, man. Okay, so now we're going to jump back to where we were earlier. So now you're meeting Chris. And now Chris yeah. is you're like, man, I'm feeling you. I want, I want you to make, I want you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to allow you to make some music for me. What was the first hit that came? You know what I'm saying? Where he was going crazy and he was like, man, I got something here, man. I'm out the Honda Civic and into a Bentley now. Man. What was that first hit that really got you going? Not the first song we ever made together? You can do the first song. Let's go to the first song. Let's so play. I played it smart. When I was around Chris Brown, I hung around him a year without playing music. A whole year. Because I didn't want to be no groupie nigga. I was just trying to understand That's etiquette in the studio. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk to him too much. But if you was hungry or you want some drink, I'll go get that. Right. And uh, shout out to my baby mama, Genesis, your mother. She helped me solidify my... This, this moment helped me solidify my whole existence with Chris Brown because I came in there, I'm getting everybody food. He like, okay, you could come to the studio again. Sneak in the studio one day, I wasn't invited, and um, he ran out of beats. I put on a CD, he records to my shit. He's recording with Tank, uh, who else was in there? Somebody named BJ Chicago Kid. Yeah. That's the homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a few people. He's so, been on the show. Okay. Yeah. So, this is my first time working with any of them. None of the niggas knew I made the beat. Chris didn't even know I made the beat. Seven Streeter was in a group called, y'all know Seven Streeter? Yeah. yeah. She was in a group called Rich Girl at the time. So Chris was just writing for them, just doing some bullshit. People wasn't really feeling Chris at the time because you got to remember at that time he had an incident with Rihanna. Right. So the whole industry was kind of choosing up sides. They didn't care what what, what happened. Yeah. Uh, he was done and right. his career was over. So my, many people didn't even want to hang in the studio with him. So the fact that these women was in the studio was big. Right. It was like women didn't want, really want to be around mm -hmm. somebody right. with the stigma. Right, right. I looked at that. I like. I, I took notice of that. Uh, the beat, the song was trash. Right. But I solidified my relationship, and he said, "Look, come to the studio more often." Next thing we did a song called Twitter. Right. You know, Twitter was real popping back then. Mm -hmm. but that's the first song we did alone. Wasn't no tank in the studio. Wasn't no rich girl. Wasn't no managers or nobody. And uh, I encouraged him to rap. He encouraged me to rap because I didn't really rap back then. Yeah, yeah. So next thing you know, me and Chris is rapping. And his manager whispered in his ear. I remember she was like, you need to sign that nigga. And at that time, I felt like uh, it was no way to get into the industry unless somebody was bringing you in, kind of like what I learned in the fraternity. So we talking about 09, 010. Exactly. Yeah. You know, at that particular 09. point, correct me if I'm wrong, Dunk, because me and Dunk, we the same nigga, except I'm bigger and more handsome. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, look, look at the niggas that, that believe yeah, he is handsome. Oh, thank you. I 
glad that you just, I just had to peep it. Like, okay. Doug still feels some type of way from from glass episode. You should have lied about the kids, nigga. You should have lied about the kids. You talking about when Precious said? You still mad at Precious, bro? You talking about that? Still mad, get it off, dog. Get it off. Speak with the heart, bro. Look at this. This must be. Anyway. You talking about what she? You talking about what she was like? Oh, I give him some pussy. Then he he trying to get some pussy. That's all that happened. Go ahead. Though. No, 2009, 2010. I yeah. believe from a rap perspective, the only person that had a major deal was the game on yeah. the coast at that. Oh point. yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. And maybe topic. Or probably no topic. Top, not, not even problem, problem had a deal. No problem. Uh, what's his name? Because uh, Topic was signed the drama family with Big Chuck. Big Chuck. Was my homie, Topic. And okay. what's the other nigga had a name? Had a had a, somebody had to deal with uh, Eminem though. Was it is it Cicero? You talking about Crooked Eye? No. Crooked, Crooked Eye. He did have the he had the uh, the but priority that, deal. But that came a little bit later. later I see what you said. Yeah, oh, right. that, oh, it was shit. only only nigga I know with that type that of like that had to be the game. The game, I the, think game. the game at that point you talking about was the only rapper on the West Coast that yeah. had a major record deal. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, that's when the whole CD shit was getting nullified. The record label, yeah. the record industry wasn't making no money. It was like a big yeah. thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's a pre- huge. yeah, that, that, it was a drought in the music yeah. industry at that particular yeah. point. Cool. Okay, so you get in the studio uh, with Chris and Lone. You do Twitter. Manager whispers in his ear, "Let's sign him to a deal." Mm-hmm. You sign the deal. Okay, so let's talk about how the deal changed your life. What, what, where, where were you financially before the deal, and then what happened? At, how did it, you know, how did it change your life financially after you signed the deal? Well, initially, nothing really changed for about two years. I was still staying on my, in my on my grandma's couch. You know, I was able to make music uh, twenty four hours, so that was a blessing. I didn't really realize how much a blessing that was until after deuces and I start getting studio time and I get the bill it's 20,000 for one session Fuck, yeah. Man. yeah and and Damn. and they asked me to work with this person yeah you know so then it's like hey, you want to work with Sam Hook okay yeah producer. get us a week and then I get my royalty check okay you made 20,000 minus 20,000 so it's like oh yeah I'm gonna get uh, my own studio <laughs> I'm uh, yeah. 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 but I'm skipping the gun I'm gonna get to that because once I got my own studio the nigga started you know, once you a hundred percent, it's like, how am I gonna get my piece out of it? Yeah, you know what I'm right. saying? Mm-hmm. So I even now, you no, know, I can make a beat and write it, but I like a collective, so we can all eat off of it. If, right. if it's people, we could we could continue to do it. Right. You know, I don't necessarily just be want to do that hundred percent shit all the time. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. How, how are the people gonna eat? Right. You know what's in it for them. So, the way the deal went, he was like, bro, twelve song deal. You know, I figured I'd do that. In two years, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. At this point, I'm up to 10. I only owe two songs. Right, right. And then I go back and look back, and we lived in the era where we were putting out mixtapes. Right. You know, the biggest mixtape was like Lil Wayne, No Ceilings, and Drake. all that. Oh, yeah. Drake. Oh, yeah. Drake shit was crazy. Mm-hmm. Drake left her. That's what really. That's yeah. what really. Nicki Minaj coming yeah. off on shit. So yeah. it's that era of where. Okay, the label you don't want to fuck with it. We still can get the streets to fuck with it. We get a hot DJ on there, right? DJ Drama, uh, who was some other ones? DJ, yeah, uh, it was K Slaves, all of them. So exactly. So what Chris did, he said, I'm gonna follow the DJ Ill Will and all them dudes, and I'm gonna follow the Ill uh, Lil Wayne format. I'm gonna put out a mixtape and see what the streets mess with. When he put out the mixtape, uh, he flew me out to Virginia. And we made no BS. We didn't make deuces yet. Right. But we made his old In My Zone mixtape. Right. But we made a song called No Bullshit, which ended up, that went platinum. That shit yeah. was hard. No Bullshit was fire. And it was a freestyle, too. Charlie, what was you, what was you <laughs> doing at this time? 09, 010. 09. Social yeah. security checks? He was trapping. <laughs> this nigga got it. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga always hating on light skin niggas. Y'all notice that? When we all when we all know that nigga was light skinned to the house fire in '93, nigga. <laughs> you light skinned uh, nigga. You man. look like you flesh colored nigga, like man, a sword. That? <laughs> that nigga still sour from last week. The hoes don't want you, nigga. <laughs> Accept that they did not want that nigga. He was sour. It's just, y'all keep bringing that shit up like I'm really mad. I'm really not mad. Like, you was upset last week. Just a minute. You was mad. I don't care. Okay. Come on, dog. You, we, I, we, you want me to get on you? I, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, you know, King, he saw it. But anyway, we got to Let's go. What are you talking about? Let's go. 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 Let's go.
A nigga was upset. A nigga was visibly visibly upset. Some real shit. We been talking about some real shit. Visibly upset. Charlie, she did bust you out. Real, real talk. <laughs> no, I want it. 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 We don't know. We're talking about it. I want it. I want it. All right, we went. We went to. We don't know. We're talking about it. No, we went to the restaurant. We went to the restaurant and shit. And we bought out, and then when it, I gave her my card, she came back. She was like, oh, no, your shit. No, not that, not that. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck about that. We're going to talk about that, too. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to uh, talk about that. Bro, he was telling the bro, you was drunk. He was like, yeah, I'm the king of the east side. <laughs> hey, I was, I was in there drunk. I, I forgot half the shit I said. And these niggas came in. You don't remember what you said to the bitch? I was like, no. You told he was king of the east side? You, was, you had dope houses? I was like, no, nah, nigga, I didn't say that. I said, I didn't say that shit. It was like, and all these niggas was in here like, yes, nigga, you said it. I said, I can't drink around these niggas no more, dog. I don't remember half that shit. I got a ship coming in. I don't remember half that shit, dog. I go to Mexico City and treat me like that. nigga's king of the east side. All the dope on the east side. Goddamn, then the chicks come in. Yeah, the dope. Chapo, that's my nigga. That nigga, hey. I got him at first time. Hey, that nigga's the king of the east side. The check came. That nigga took his crown off. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know what? You know this. I mean, I'll take it. I'm a really west side nigga. I ain't gonna lie. It's true. I don't know the east side. That's why you don't know the east side nigga. When they came out with the bill. west side nigga when that check came. It's true. They came out with the bill and I gave her the card. She was like, it's declined. I gave her another one. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. It was a whole little fraud shit put on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hey, did I give you the 200 that night? I got the 200 later. All right, facts, nigga. I got bread. Okay, but that's more. Let's get, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get 200. So let's get into some real truth. Let's get into some real truth. All right, because that's truth. It happened. Let's get into some real truth. It was a female on the show flirting with everybody. One nigga really believed her and sent hard eyes on all her photos for six weeks. Who was that nigga that really thought that she wanted to fuck? Let's we'll get some truth though. Who? Let's get some truth. On who, what? who went on a date with the bitch the next day though? This nigga. <laughs> who went on a date with the bitch? Cause she caught. really liked me, nigga. Not caught. Oh, she liked you. Yeah, not Dozy. Not everybody else. She was in the face kissing their ass. Who is you? I feel you. Who was in the hard eyes? Now, I can tell by that. Six that, weeks. Look at that hat. Six look weeks. Look at that hat. You just grabbed that hat out the dirty clothes. Six weeks. You came here thinking you fresh. Stop it. Stop it. Six what weeks. Do you <laughs> what do you mean? I'm glad. Six I'm weeks of hard eyes. She I'm didn't want you. Look. Just like a man who presses every day. Didn't want you. Oh, he left another hard eyes. Oh. Duck leave you on Shut your head around so that's, oh, that's, 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 that's a nigga that say he from hey, the joint from Ramadan. That's why I'm fuck with that shit, nigga. I'm a really I'm a cop that nigga for real. So Man, nigga. I if you put on black like gloves right now, we didn't think you'd have fingernails, nigga. What the fuck you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> you musty, nigga. Oh, you got on your you got on your daughter's workout gear. What the fuck is that? That's nigga? what it is. What the fuck is that? Did you, did you cut the arms off that tank top? That's or what that it shit is. was born like that. <laughs> You got that, that big ass, ass old three top T on, nigga. You what the fuck you talking about? You couldn't afford it. You go, you, you look at shit like this, like, no, nah, I can't do, I can't get that. Go to the sales spot, nigga. Where you go? You can't even afford. Look at the shit you got on, my nigga. Oh, my nigga, what is? Are it? you wearing Adidas without Adidas shit? What the fuck you talking about? These Hardens, you fashion oh, no. so you wearing Adidas and Nikes. These are the Adidas, you nah, nigga. Nigga, no, no, Hey, that's the Magic Johnson. Those are the Magic Johnson. Hey, get. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why is the Magic Johnson AIDS game eights, nigga? The AIDS game, nigga. The AIDS game. What the AIDS game? Y'all niggas on that. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. No. When do we become the kind of niggas that assess other people's fashion in this motherfucker? That nigga gay to the motherfucker, dog. That's just your weak point. That's nigga weak point. Look at that monthly pride shirt you got on, you whole ass nigga. With them damn Home Depot cargo pants on. I like Musty Pride. Uh, yeah. Musty Pride. With them Home Depot cargo uh, pants on, nigga. Yeah. If you don't fix the drywall in this motherfucker right now. <laughs> Oh, this nigga ah, got a tape measure on his nigga. Right hey, you got that hat from Your my tags nigga. Expired, nigga. <laughs> nigga. You got that hat underneath a dummy tire, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That nigga went to change his tire and found that shit and said, you know what? Shut your, go, up, up. Shut your hungry ass up. The only way we can get you to nigga. participate in a water fight is by putting milk in the gun, nigga. You look like an old ass vice lord, nigga. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that nigga still tilt this hat to the Chris Hatt's like, you get your... All that ass nigga. That nigga used to be a gangster in his time. Nigga dressed like this, my nigga. nigga you dressed like an eighth grader, bro. You the only nigga that'll show up at 43 with some braces. And nigga, fucked you, up teeth. Nigga, you, got, nigga. you dressed like you wired, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, next time I pick some deodorant with aluminum in it, though, nigga, for real. Because you slapping, my nigga. I hate your hat. <laughs> All right, 09. All right, we back on. 09. 09, 2010, I had just caught a case on some on some baby mama shit. You okay. know what I'm saying? 09. Baby mama had kidnapped. I had, I had custody of my little boy. She got out of prison, kidnapped this nigga, Ooh. moved to Atlanta. She was off the grid. I couldn't I find her. Wouldn't return my shorty. You know what I'm saying? And I finally found him in a school in Atlanta. And I went down there and I took that nigga out of school. Like, fuck it. I snatched him out of school. Then they came through with the helicopters, the police. It was a whole. That's like 09, 2010, man. She was playing games with the shorty. And it's real. Because a lot of times, man, they be thinking like, oh, that nigga crazy. Oh, that shit happening to him. What's going on with him? It's like, damn, man, if you got a baby mama that's playing games with your kids. That should have had you out right. here. I had a partner tell me, one of my friend brothers, because my baby mama moved my youngest to Atlanta. You know, and she's with a famous politician out there and stuff like that. So it gets tricky with the mm -hmm. litigation shit. Yeah, it's a lot of favors. Interstate, and, all that old shit. Yeah, you know, he used to be a former DA over there. But I, the family beautiful and all this. Problem I had with one of my frat brothers, right? He like, hey, you know your daughter go to school with uh, one of the bruh's little son. I was like, oh, cool, Where, where's that? He's like, now wait, you know you got a temper. I was like, nigga, I got a temper. You know what, I got a temper. What, is, what does that have to do? I got a temper. It's my daughter, bro. I'm not finna do nothing around children that's, why? Now I'm mad at you for even bringing this up. What are you, I don't even want to go any further. Now I am upset because I'm trying not to get upset. And I'm like, bro, if you don't tell me where she at, I'm not going to fuck with you no more. And the nigga would not tell me. He's like, no, you're going to trip. I was like, you ain't my friend no more. This is why you yeah. call me and tell me. Don't even friend. tell me. Yeah. You have to, to tell me half friend. the story? That's some other shit. You're going to trip. You're going to go up there. I'm like, no, I'm not, bro. going to trip about his kids is what I'm saying. Question. So is that when you left the whole frat thing behind? No. I was leaning towards it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's. But nah, I don't know why I did. I just, I start finding out. I got into the cult, like learning about what people be doing in witchcraft and shit yeah, like that. Wow. Because because people shit. like the people like to <laughs> put it in little shit. So I like to I like to know what it is, so I don't have to fuck with it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I found some shit in that. Right. You know, it led yeah. me back to just you know, knowing God for myself. I feel like it's about the personal relationship. Yeah. Right. Yeah, some facts. people ain't everybody ain't had a father, but if you are a father, you know about that love. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I believe in. I believe we got a daddy up there. Yeah, right. That's sure. heavy. That's heavy. Okay, bam. For real, for real. Okay, so how did deuces come about? Easy, easy. So on my granny couch, done did the uh, mixtape for him. It's going well. It's free. But I'm like, you know, I got to figure out my life. I had a girl who kind of uh, got me into the music industry. Her name was Treasure Davis. She was in the choir with me. Yeah. So it was like that whole choir she was singing background for Nicki Minaj. So before I even blew up, I was kind of. sex noises at the time. <laughs> 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 Whoa, 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 <laughs> I need you to grunt real quick. <laughs> but no, nah, the shorty, shorty was like inspiration. She was a chick that could sing and she looked good. And you know what I'm saying? She dumped me talking about, you know, I want to follow my music career. Right. And she, she left me, and then she ended up messing with a little Hispanic dude who used to fix houses and shit. And I was like, I get it. He got skills, you know. But I really was upset. For a while, I really hated all Mexican dudes because she left me. <laughs> no, for real. It was, a, it, was a, it was a Mexican, a regular Mexican dude. And then I was like, damn. Like a Pisa? It was like a Pisa. <laughs> <laughs> but he had swag. Yeah. <laughs> she had a nose ring and shit. Like a Pisa with nose ring. I was such a chump at this time. I even had like... I had her Instagram and shit, so I went on her Instagram. Not Instagram, it was MySpace back then. It's recent. And her and the nigga, like, got the bathtub full of uh, tamales. They making tamales in the bathtub, like some real essay shit. Like, <laughs> some real, they was making tamales. And, you had, and I'm like, damn, I want to make tamales. <laughs> tamales in the bathtub? I like, the nigga making tamales with you. I never did that. Like, 
In the it was in the tub, <laughs> though. <laughs> yep. I never did that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dewan. So that's how the nigga got to your heart? God damn, I wish I would have did that shit. Do, do I happen to go home and try that right so now? I couldn't top it. I knew Ooh. nothing I could do. It's always a nigga who could fix the house or make tamales who could take your bitch. No matter if y'all you could sing or nothing. So my baby mama was also tripping. That would have sent me over there. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, dang, no matter what, you know, somebody could take it. You walk in and it was interlocking fingers while yeah. making the tamale on the top. Like, 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 you like, 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 oh, straight up, y'all making tamales while holding hands? Why'd you leave? I can't make tamales. Julio. You can't make tamales. His name was Julio. Julio. Do Julio mean July? Do that mean July? Hey, Spanish Julio? Julio? Tamales in yeah. bathtubs, yeah. nigga? They better that the shit out that motherfucker. A real, a real chick gonna tell you, like, I just, I just, I want to fuck with somebody else. Yeah, that's cool. She said for my music career. Mm. Look, hey, I'm gonna but focus was, on school. Tamales. It was for tamales, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take the so music that's career it. shit. Damn. Yeah, I used to be a real shit. nice dude. Like, I used yeah. to be like, I don't know. And then that made me the the be the jerk I needed to be for yeah. women to really like me. Because after that, women really started liking me. I became a jerk. One second. Pizza Inc., man, we love you, bro. You always yes, looking sir. out. Yes, sir. Appreciate the donation, well, family. Yeah, Much man. respect. Don't like buttons, too, man. Yeah, Somebody yeah, said yeah, like button. Smash up the we light. should be at 2,000 likes right now. Come on. Let's do it, y'all. Okay. Subscribe. Go ahead. Smash the like. Why subscribe? But yeah, anyway, she she left me, and then she started doing music. I mean, one time she like, oh... I'm around where I'm a thick and he done slipped me a pill. He trying to get, she used to always make me feel like these music niggas was after. Right, right, right. And I couldn't compete. So I'm like, all right, bitch, watch. Aight, bitch. This is where the, cause you gonna see where the, the passion for the song come from. Then I found out I'm having a child um, that January. So my baby mama start, act, start tripping. She'd go on my phone and, and Carrie Hilson would say something like, hey, babe, Carrie Hilson didn't even look at me like that, I don't think. Right. No, I know, I know. But that's Carrie Hilson, though. Right? I, I looked at her yeah, like that. Yeah, I had yeah, a Carrie yeah, Hilson, though. Like. Nigga just, dro just dropping the right like it's red. Uh, like, 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 girl, you ain't no regular bitch. That's Carrie Hilson. Bitch, you know her words. Like, I like, bitch, you know her music. Nigga, nigga, act like it's Ramona the damn bitch. It's Carrie Hilson. My, like, okay, I can see that. Nigga said KK. Just text me like, hey, oh. can't, can't trip. It's two in the morning. She's talking about what you She'll doing. say something right. like, good night, babe. Or, you know, Jordan Sparks be like, good night, babe. The nigga another one, Jordan Sparks. No, no. Cause <laughs> I have to, because these, these are the two people who used to get my ass beat yeah, girl, by this girl all the time. Shit, nigga. No. Hey, that ass whooping was nigga, worth it, nigga. you going to see why, though. I'm not I'm not name drama. I promise everybody there. I'm not name drama. Anybody who thinks that's a goddamn loser. So yeah. Yeah. sit on his yeah. couch. <laughs> these these people used to text me and I was developing that relationship with them. And my child's mom just she was pregnant at the time. She couldn't take it. Oh, right. One Emotions. time she was a Delta. Right. She oh. took she didn't her work at the airlines, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That nigga Kev thought he was balling. I saw the nigga everywhere. I saw, I saw the nigga do the song. I was like, oh, okay. She didn't work at no airline. They're going to be in her inbox for a buddy pass. Heard you work at those. Go ahead, go. So whenever I go to the shower, she's going to go sneak in my phone. And we wasn't together, but we was, you know, shacking up and shit. You about to have my baby. I'm going to be over there. Man, she go on my phone, see somebody. Why is she saying baby? So she take the brick and hit me in the head with the Debo? Head. Yeah. Oh, I said, I can't be with this motherfucker. Hell yeah, no. So did you I follow up? How <laughs> <laughs> did you follow up? Charlie Trick. How did you follow up? You're in a good space. I follow up. I'm just wondering, <laughs> did you follow up? A bitch hit me, I'm following up. <laughs> So I had a natural reaction or whatever, okay, but you know. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you ain't about no damn brick. Damn. She hit me with the Delta brick. It's called a uh, burden. Oh my god. Oh, oh, she oh, hit me with her burden. Oh my god. But any any good athletes know you, you just sometimes you have follow through. You know what I'm saying? Bitch hit, hit me with a brick. Delta uh, brick. She gonna be seeing bird. <laughs> turpin, turpin. Yeah. <laughs> hit me with a brick. So that's why in the, in the song I'm like the other chick I'm with never complaining. She made me want to leave. Oh. He beats women. Esther, stop with the bullshit. Look, there's there's two different things. There's really? a difference between hitting a woman mm -hmm. 
and hitting a woman back. Right. right. Self defense is a real thing. I'm right. not letting no bitch just beat on me because she's a woman. Yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah, might yeah. get one pass, you hit me in my mouth, I might say, hey, and right. lock you up. But if you keep coming for me, bitch, I'm gonna have to send you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to send you. Gotta go. yeah. I don't want and I don't right. think it's right to hit a woman, but to hit somebody back in self defense, right. we're people yeah. before we're our gender. Right. right. You need to be treating people the way you want to be treated. Right. 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 You feel right. what I'm right. saying? And that's the bot and that's the bottom line. True. And I think what they're talking about more so is like when stuff starts looking like a pattern. Right. But y'all don't understand that, you know, things can look like a pattern. It's what somebody says, what you saying, and it's the truth. You yeah. guys don't know the truth. I'm a guy that's operating the truth. I would never lie to you. I don't hit women. I have two daughters, and anybody hit my children, I kill them. Mm -hmm. So I don't want nobody saying I hit their daughters. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I have hit a woman back. And I don't believe you should do that either because shit don't really hurt. Well, a brick hurt. Bro, a brick hurt like a brick hurt. <laughs> but most of the time, you you men that hit women back or you hit women first is because she hurt your pride. Yeah. And, and sure, sure. you can't really cut open and see your feelings. So. But yeah, we have to separate because yeah. people will muddy the muddy. They the put issue. me with them. Yeah, yeah. they're gonna muddy it. Yeah. But look, man, it's like there's women who have killed men. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, let's. Fact, yeah, most so, so, yeah. So let's not stop. Let's stop acting like you know some of these women are defenseless. Helpless women. Some of these women are prideful, manly, egotistical women yeah. who feel like physically that they can do whatever they want to you. You can't just be hitting on a man as a woman. If you're a woman and you're with a man and you feel like you got to put your hands on him, I'm telling you as big bro, you need to leave. Yeah. Right. Because you're putting yourself in a deadly situation. Right. The only way I can make it out is I got shot by a woman. And the only way I could make it out, because she's fucking with the gun after she shot me trying to get it to work to kill me. I beat the dog shit out of her. Right. right. If I right. wouldn't have did that, I wouldn't have got out of that situation. Right. Right. How many times did you hear after you knocked her out? I get probably a good 12 piece. Nigga, <laughs> 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 the, 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 the first one put her to sleep, you kept going. <laughs> I, kept, I kept working. I, did. I kept working. Nigga, shit snapped. But nigga. if I wouldn't have done that, I probably wouldn't be here today because she's fucking with the gun trying to get it to work. So chill with that narrative that every woman is innocent in all these situations. You, you was almost... Because they pretty. Just because they pretty, don't believe everything. You, nigga, you was almost on an episode of Snap, nigga. <laughs> uh -huh. Hey, but it's two things with that. Because I, I, I've had to counsel domestic violence relationships before. It's two things with that. One, the majority of women who are in prison, they're in prison over crimes of passion. Women don't go out and rob banks. No. Most of the reason, most time they're in Facts. jail because they did something within the house. Right. Yeah. The majority of domestic violence is caused by, by women. And number two, we yeah. have a generation of women... Uh, two generations now that was raised that everything is equal, men and women are the same, and all this bullshit that they have. Mm -hmm. Look, men, and I'm not, I don't advocate for none of that violence no, shit. This is just, this just something no, that I've, I've observed in having to counsel this. Mm -hmm. Men, when it, when it comes to men, when there are disagreements, men fight each other. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? It, it, uh, everybody has a point. Right. And we have a lot of women out there who were raised to get up in men's faces. Right. Yeah, and and, 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 and then you were you were you were misled by your mom and she yep. told you that. All bad, bro. What, bro. This isn't learn a, this, again. This isn't advocate domestic violence. This is a call to the ladies. You don't get in a man's face. Just like a man shouldn't say things and hit you and do all those. It's a two part. It takes two to tango. Yeah, yeah. So right. you can't get all up in people's grills and do things because. You can't control how someone's going to react. Say, say, say this too, Stay Demar. civil with your conversation. Say this too. Don't burn a nigga's shit either. Don't destroy his property. Don't do any of that shit. Just talk. Yeah, just because you can't. Just so we ain't saying don't hit a nigga burn his shit up. That's no, we ain't saying that either. Too, right? All that shit is assault also. Spitting on him, throwing Spit shit at him, all that shit. Don't do any of that shit. Well, there's a word that's thrown around a lot lately because people forget that white supremacy, one of the main principles of it is Fragility. confusion. Yep. Right. right. And there's a word since... Since I spoke out on the whole, uh, you know, to hear situation with uh, with precious, there's a word that I've been seeing thrown around a lot: conflating. Mm -hmm. Conflating. Conflating, mm -hmm. right? And it's when you muddy two issues, yes, like two sir. things that are exclusively mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. You kind of make them form together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. a, a, a decent, everyday, respectable woman is a lot different than a woman that's physically violent. Yes. And a lot of times what women tend to do because women, a lot of women have a gender bias. Mm -hmm. They feel like because they're a good woman and they do the right thing and that they don't test men and do things to physically put them har themselves in harm and danger that maybe every woman is like them. And that's just not how this shit works, man. Exactly. The, no you know what I'm saying? Jail. It's not how it works, right. man. Right. Um, you got to hear both sides of the story in every situation. You got to give everybody the benefit of the doubt regardless of their gender. 
You know what I'm saying? You got to give them the benefit of the doubt. And we're going to go to a commercial break. Make sure y'all smash the like button when we get back more to interview for my boy Kevin McCall. Crash, man. Yeah. Just... <sighs> hey, guys. Oh. Hi. Nice you to must meet be Marty. You. Yeah, yeah, Marty. Nice to meet you guys. Oh, thank you. Yeah. COVID-19. Hello, I'm yeah. Buck. Welcome nice. to the Hells Angels offices. It's a uh, nice office. Well, I mean, this is Beverly Hills. Uh, we are the first Hells Angels chapter in Beverly Hills history. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to be, like, rude or anything. I thought you guys were a white supremacist group. Yeah, you're thinking of Hades Angels. This is Hells Angels. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, how'd you hear about us? Well, a group of you guys actually robbed my grandmother at gunpoint. <laughs> that sounds like us, man. But, uh, also <laughs> Craigslist. Oh, you saw the ad? Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, great. Nice to know it's working. Yeah. You should tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I was working at Amazon, but I kind of felt like Jeff Bezos had a ceiling above our heads because we could only make $6 an hour. Well, there's a lot of room for growth here. Do you own a sawed-off shotgun? I was hoping that you guys actually provided that. We do not provide sawed-off shotguns to new hire employees. What are your salary expectations? Well, like I said, I was actually only making $6 an hour at Amazon, and that wasn't enough to even feed my cat. So I need like $14 an hour because she's about to have kitties. Oh, grandcats. Yes, great grandcats. Hmm. Do you own a motorcycle? I own a moped, but I do have a motorcycle license. And it says right here you've killed 14 people. That's great. <laughs> That's great, man. Uh, what does it sound like right before somebody dies? Well, what I did was they were, I wrapped my hands around their neck and I pushed in on their Adam's apple. It just, it's like they just did like a, a gasp and then they like had that look in their eye like they knew they were about to die. And then I just pressed my forehead to their forehead and then they passed away. You haven't killed anybody, have you? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. I can definitely tell. Look at your shirt. <clears throat> I don't think I'm out of line in asking why you would come into this office and lie. I mean, COVID-19, you just look outside, it's destroyed so many businesses. And the Hells Angels, it's, it's the only place hiring right now. You guys in Walmart. You don't have a motorcycle? You don't have a sawed-off shotgun. Your head is in the right place, but normally we don't do entry-level positions. We would be willing to offer you the position for the six-month unpaid internship. However, you would have to uh, kill two people. Guys, I would be more than happy to kill two people. You got a lot of heart. You tell me who you want dead, and they're dead. The first six months you'll be riding in a side cart with one of our oldest chapter members, Shit Buzzard. He'll be training you. Great, great. Guys, this is, this is fantastic. Are you able to grow facial hair? I actually, like it, I can, but it like comes in sort of like patchy. Like I have like facial alopecia. One moment, please. Okay, no problem. If you don't, if you don't, excuse me here. Um, okay. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, that, that definitely does that. Okay, let's do All right, this, this, it should be this. Just try. It's perfect. Yeah, uh, that looks, that looks great. Yeah, looks great. Welcome aboard. Hey, I want to say thank you so much for hiring me. Also, remember your sawed-off shotgun. I'll text you the phone number of our illegal weapons distributor, and uh, he'll get you started to get you a, a gun for a reasonable price. Guys, I can't tell you how happy I am. Make sure you wear a mask Monday. We have a lot of older members in their mid-70s, and they're high risk. I am not going to let you down. I am a go-getter. 
and I promise you I will not give you anything less than 110%, okay? We would expect nothing less. This is a big opportunity. Thank you. Congratulations there. Thank you. Take care, okay? Yeah. Bye. Shit buzzards really gonna love this kid. Brothers, but you forgot you was a Jew. Started acting like a nigga. Look what this has come to. A new identity. Holes in male clothes with them rude hostilities. Look, I just want a shot to impair mares with red dots. Cause acting to get you work like headshots. In my car with a bizarre Asian. White coupe, the car is Caucasian. On a star blazing. Changed my heart, did everything in tools, then built my arc. Cause I've been old, childish alchemist, cause I've been gold. A lot of rebounding like Robin on the sparks, and I've been told. Great men do it, cause they've been through it with the right bin bow. I judge ya on what happens when I'm done. Will she raise soldier when he raise gun? Or will he get exposure and D-Wade's son?
We fought it out, bad tenant, her dad didn't, gave notice and got it out. Now I walk in belief and travel without a doubt. If I owe you something, I'm not going to be able to give it to you. But if you want it, you can get it from God, nigga. I'm tired of people not saying what it is, man. I'm a director. Hey, I'm a director. <laughs> Places, everybody. Son, I apologize. I took some risks to provide for you and your mother. It landed me in jail for eight years, and it took me away from you. Excuse me. What's up, pimp? Hey. What's going on, Flint? Just left the shop, man. You left us up there. I figured you might oh, need okay. this here, What y'all got going on up here? Oh, right. y'all chilling. What's happening? Hey, Charlie, what's up, my nigga? What's the word, what's my guy? What's up, oh, big old man? man? What's the word, dog? Hey, man, I ain't seen you in a minute, you, man. What you been up to? Oh, shit. Not drinking enough protein shakes, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you, you know, man. You, when you light-skinned, you, you got to play the part, man, so don't nobody fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can use that kind of life, man. Fuck the kids, man. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. What's been going on, though, man? I'm telling you. Nephew been out there doing it big though. All these views, man. What is this nigga doing? This man is a lyrical and creative genius. I need me a thick, but no homo though, cause that's that gay shit. Nigga, as long as I say no homo, it's not gay, right? Absolutely right, sir. Anime. Shout out to Charlie Google's film. <laughs> Attention, kick on me, puppy. I teach a This is so dumb. Everything about this was iconic. Let me know what you think, bro. I got you. We should call. Like, this needs to be the best meme. This needs to be the next Old Town Road. <laughs> What's going on with you, you big French bull, Mastiff Terrier looking motherfucking dog ass nigga, man? You just like your daddy, man. Look at you, boy. You get big. Ah, shit. Nigga, I was broke my hand, you bum. What you feeding this nigga? You a got whole lot of greens. You got some more of it? I'm hungry. They got some weed in here. <laughs> I want to take some time, though, man. I got to thank y'all, man. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you for holding down the shop while I was in, in the penitentiary, man. I'm just saying, right. just all you got to yeah. do, nigga, is put the... Yeah, run the alternator. Run the line to the alternator. Yeah, the, the tube got to go in the hole. Without you, none of this would be possible. Right on. I love you, man. Brother-in-law, you've been a rock, man. You put money on my books. You kept me eating while I was locked down. He was there for my son. You've been a rock for my wife. Whatever you need, I got you, man. I'm just, I'm just humbled by that, brother. I gotta say, though, man, if I had something in my glass, I would toast you. You've been doing right by my sister. And I really honor and appreciate you for that. I know things ain't been perfect, but you've been doing the best that you can. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, brother. And I appreciate you for that. Dad, me... Glass me up anyhow, even though mine's is empty. Toast to you. To my son, man, I, I, I apologize, Junior. I wasn't living right. And because of that, the system took me away from you. The show you are watching is a paid program or advertisement. USA Network is not responsible for the claims and representations made by the sponsor. Hello world, I'm Cephas X. Hotel, I have a breakthrough for you today. Years ago, my ex-wife, come on, my beautiful ex-wife, we traveled to Kemet. I picked up what I thought was a harmless blueberry. Unbeknownst to me, it was a Godoji berry. Godoji. Godoji berries have healing qualities. They heal any and everything. You ain't got no hands? Godoji berry. You got a bad knee? Godoji berry. You little slow and don't know where to go? Good doze, you berry. Baby, bring me a berry. Hurry up now. Hurry up, baby. Okay, baby. I mean, you need a damn dagger to give me a berry? Why you got a dagger? My bad, baby. Okay, I mean, you know. Just... Get the fuck up out the screen. Look. Yeah, this dude got the key to success, homie. You know, you're in and out, you're in and out. You just need to be out more times than you're in. And, and uh, I'm going to get to that, okay? I mean, you the cameraman or you, are you me, okay? I'm me, you the cameraman, okay? Look, we walk the path of the great migration. Dogs don't think barks. They think words. Can you please go get me the bits? Bits. 
Hurry up, hurry up. Okay, look, look, look. I'm going to eat this berry. Now, look. There's a dog there. Look, look. We're going to bark at the dog. It's, it's, ain't nothing going to happen. What, ready? Let's mm -hmm. bark. Look. See, nothing, nothing. The dog is not responding. See, no joint in. The dog doesn't know. Right? But when I get on my knees, I say, come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. The dog comes right to me. See, the Kadoji bear. It works here. And I swear, this is not a scam. Boy, if you don't mean you Hey, go down this number. Get them berries. Hello? <coughs> Hello? Who we getting collect calls from, baby? We getting collect... Okay, Joker. Hi, can I speak to Cephas X, please? Hold on. I'm trying to get a 3.5 of the Joja Berry. What? Could, I... <laughs> Could you wrap those up in wool? Are you playing? Hang up the phone! Alrighty. <laughs> Why y'all people? Serious callers, please. Okay, who? Caller, how you doing, Carla? How can I help you, Carla? Yo, Greg, it's your pops. What? Pa? It's your pops. Code Complain. The only enemy I have is me and my own big head. <laughs> me and Charlie Google's been running scams since 1985, partner. Get it from God, my nick. Sit in with us like we back. Easter services. And shit. We back, man. All right, so. Alright man. Shit, that's why in Hollywood they be having all the producers and prompters and shit cause nigga forget where he was in the interview. So the last part we was at we, we was at Deuces. Yeah, we got there. Deuces. We got there. Well my baby mama uh the one girl left me for tamales and my right. other baby mom was <laughs> tripping at my phone. Yeah, you never thought about making up a song called Tamales, my nigga? Tamales. You got you just had a little horn in the background as a beat. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> to my so much beef. Oh, like the lady. Hilarious. Show got a live goldfish in his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, stupid, nigga. Hey, nigga, your hairline make me want to beat up your barber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that nigga, that nigga only tapered up nice around the sides and shit, nigga. That nigga show oh, get, man. that nigga show get mad when his doctor tell him he can go to his, get his prostate check once a week, nigga. <laughs> 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 and hey, you shoot Tom's head on the break. Yeah, Tom's head. Y'all talk about me and this motherfucker. <laughs> it was a rip. I keep going. What you got to I keep going. Me? What you got, Tom? Go ahead. <laughs> The back of show neck look like uh motherfucking vocals on Pro Tools. <laughs> this nigga look like an old ass Dragonfly Jones, nigga. That, <laughs> that nigga Todd got an RV parked by a playground right now, just in case. Just in case, nigga. You had that shirt since you was eight, nigga. <laughs> We didn't get the edibles, man. Hold on. Let's get back to the edibles. And that nigga got an R. Kelly mask wrapped around his head, nigga. That nigga grandma got an R. Kelly 12 play vest, nigga. This nigga. That was a late hitter. That was a late hitter. That was a late hitter. That nigga, Dewan built a cult following by leaving restaurants bad Yelp reviews, nigga. Show killed the Siamese twin. Ain't that nigga the wolf? This nigga show shirt look like the last level on a haunted house. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh shit. That nigga Todd look like your uncle for real, nigga. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, nigga. All right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I think Todd rub it off on all of us, nigga. God damn, that nigga, go to the back, Todd. Put that nigga on the back bench, man. What you, what you got? Look, <laughs> 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 
This uh, this nigga Dewan last week had on that custody battle shirt. Nigga, he was dressed up. You seen it? It was a button up. Damn. That nigga Todd got it. That nigga Todd. That nigga Todd got an ENJ uh, hand lotion. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, a little bit. that nigga, that nigga Dozy got adopted by a white family when he was three. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga, and they paid all my bills on time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> that nigga Todd's beard is attached to his bandana, and he put it on together at the same time. Oh, all right, Otto, yeah. you got cinnamon in your braids, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That nigga Ty got a blood sport bandana, nigga. What? The Kumite? And two bandanas back to back This this nigga show got that watch out the claw machine. The claw machine? The claw machine? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He's eating He's eating wild. Wild. We're not hitting right now. Show favorite animal is a prairie dog. Oh, nigga, Stover. <laughs> they sleep in the ground. Uh, nigga, your favorite <laughs> actor. <laughs> nigga, Stover. Nigga, your favorite actor. How about this going on? Nigga, your favorite. Nigga, your favorite actor is Brian Pumper. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> nigga. That nigga do the Brian Pumper dance when he get happy, nigga. <laughs> that nigga. Brian that nigga. Pumper. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, bro. That, oh, nigga, that nigga show got a closet full of gas station watches he ashamed to wear, nigga. <laughs> You're stupid, nigga. All right, deuces. That nigga. <laughs> I got, I got one more for y'all, man. I got one more for y'all. That nigga Kevin McCall look like, look like show public defender. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, but what was he stealing? What did he get caught stealing? Why he got a public defender? Cause that nigga was eating fish out of fish tanks, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> see? You see? You see? You know, you know, I tried to push you over the boat. You talking about that? You know what I mean, man? You can see his back. They got nine hours of, of pet store surveillance on the show. This nigga got a bag of dope fish. I like that. I like that, nigga. Hey, show the shirt and like the back. Like he took it out of his fish aquarium. Man, uh, man that nigga. We got, uh, we got the dark eye. That nigga got the Cisco braids, and nigga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so where baby at? Nigga, if you don't shut your Dante Wilder hairdresser having <laughs> ass up, I nigga to this day looking ass. He get his hair braided by passion till this day. Oh, not the mama looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I use that. I use that. I use that. I use that. Yeah, I use that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I use that on Craig and Brandon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you took your joke and used it on you? Yeah, yeah. He's a man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We don't stand yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. I use that joke. Yeah. I said oh, that to you. You said the joke. That, that, that nigga auto work for ADD. Nigga. Yeah. That nigga don't look like him though. Auto work for yeah. ADD. Still a joke back there, nigga. <laughs> That nigga, that nigga, that nigga, that nigga, that nigga back there with the camera recording. And let me say this. And let me say this for the record, dog. Because, what was it, two years ago, MTV stole, roast me, and put it on they shit. And Pat went up like, man, they stole my show. I need y'all to ride for me. MTV stole my show. Y'all need to ride for me. Pat, why you ain't had that same energy with Leslie stole old girls jokes, dog? That's all I'm saying. That's a valid Facts. point. That's I mean, I know I wasn't going to say nothing about this episode, but... We was riding hard for roast me with, roll, with MTV. I, I, Remember I that roll, shit when they I stole roll it? I rolled hard for Pat yeah. on that. I rolled hard for Pat. See, yeah. what Pat don't know is I got, like, connections and shit in the music industry and shit. I know niggas. Six I albums. Just, you feel what I'm saying? I got six albums, man. Nigga. Six My albums. Fuckers know nigga. Me. Yeah. I rolled hard for him, but I, I ain't got no beef with them. I spoke to Kev on stage. We square. He a okay. decent dude. He stood up when he was supposed to stand up. He made the video. To his fan base, I appreciate y'all standing up for him. The assumptions that you guys were making were just totally wrong. Hey, they be you feel me? Off. I mean, y'all yeah. be so left field, it's ridiculous. I literally, in that situation, stood up for somebody whom I believe in. You know what I'm saying? It had nothing to do with um, anything personal with Kev, but you, what you got to realize is they have a group of people 
that work together a lot. Pat, Kev, all them cats, and they're talented dudes, but their their first priority is each other. So on the outside looking in, if I see the homegirl being etched out of something, and it's reminiscent of something that I went through, as a man, I got to stand up. Yeah. You feel me? I wasn't trying to interject myself and try to be like no tough guy or nothing. I was literally making sure my friend that I've known for a decade was getting treated fairly. Right. Had nothing to do with ADD because ADD, Kevin on stage don't run ADD. It's a completely different entity and the owner of ADD said he'll come on here and clarify whatever we need him to clarify. So come on here, man. We welcome you. You're loved here. Right. It ain't no beef, man. But I wouldn't be a real nigga if I didn't stand up if I thought something was wrong. So the Kev on stage is fan base. That's what it literally is. You have the assumption because you think the nigga has more followers or whatever that I'm a broke nigga. I'm not a broke nigga. I don't have any hatred towards Kev for being a Christian. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. I don't fuck with religion, but religion and having a personal relationship with your God, whoever it is, is completely different than religion. You feel you're not messing with a nigga that's dealing in the normal orthodoxy. I'm an out of the box nigga. So stop trying to put me in this in this dumbass uh, box that ain't me. I'm right. thinking, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. Real niggas stand up. Yeah. And Kev stood up in that particular instance and I salute you for it. Now all that there's left to do is for all those people who had that energy for me for standing up for the homegirl, let me see you ride on Leslie for being the thief. Let me see you stand up for to hear if she is accusing him of something that he didn't do. That's what I want to see. You wasting your energy on a nigga that was just standing up for somebody. So let me see if you guys do the right thing. Because you, the energy, the, the all the messages that y'all inundated with me, I mean inundated my uh, YouTube with, y'all need to spend that same energy on Leslie. Because she, because Precious worked closely with Pat, Kev on stage, Tahir, and Tony Baker. And none of them stood up and rolled for her. And that's why I did. Because I don't, I don't fear Leslie at all. Right. Fuck her agency. Fuck her if she continues to be on that bullshit. I can forgive her. I don't have no beef with her, but I'm not standing down for nobody. Fuck Hollywood. Hey. You feel what I'm saying? And that's just how I feel. You feel what I'm saying? So don't get it. Get at me. Stand up for motherfucking precious. Talk that shit, man. Yeah, that's right. You want to be up in here trying to judge my character because I'm not no docile, uh, churchy type nigga because I'm not uh, bending to the knee for these motherfuckers. But you niggas ain't stood up for precious. And, and I'll make this clear. Me and Kev on stage is straight. I don't have no beef with Kev on stage. I never had beef, but I, I had to call it how I seen it in that situation. And from here on out, I don't have nothing to say about it. But just know that all you motherfuckers that was trying to ride for him, I respect that. I really appreciate that y'all follow him, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and that y'all do what y'all do for him. But you're misguided. If you could, if you think you can get in the chat room and make some character references to to my intentions on why I do it, because there's a multiplicity of reasons that exist outside of that you, that you guys will never be privy to. Because me and me and Kev squashed this shit. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And we got your back, man. I just wanted to put that out there regarding that. All these people in comments and making all these things. Like, do your research. MTV blatantly stole the show. Roast me. And Pat wanted everybody to ride for him, and we did. Let's say this, too. We Let's roll for you, too, Pat. Man. So ride, ride for Precious and Camille the same way as my own. Because you know boy. what niggas going to say? Oh, them niggas, them niggas is, is want to jump on the beef train. And this is what I'm trying to say. It's so many niggas we can address right now. Talk about <laughs> it, bro. Talk it's about it. It's so many it. niggas you name little punk-ass shots and saying shit, bro. Right. Y'all really want y'all y'all don't want to see our Aztec warrior, homes. So chill out. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And let us do us, bro. We we. we he, what Craig did was very commendable. A lot of niggas wasn't gonna do it because they like scared. Said, they scared. They don't want they. Let's keep it real. Let's yeah. keep it one hundred. Tony Baker, Kev on stage, to hear that whole group of people. Pat, they work hard. They do, and they got They got a pretty big following, and I respect mm -hmm. the work. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and for the most case, I've been ninety nine and ninety nine percent supportive of everything they did. Just that one thing I wasn't feeling. I just wasn't feeling that at all. And it still weirded me out to the, I mean, I, I haven't been this weirded out by much in life, but it weirded me out how I did nothing wrong but stand up for my homegirl. Sometimes in a fight, shit gets ugly. Sometimes you got to punch a nigga in the mouth a few times before they realize, oh, this nigga's like me. I can't just be pushing up on this nigga. Or I can't just bully this nigga. Like, this is the type of nigga that's willing to die. They need it. You feel what I'm saying? And sometimes you got to meet force with force. 
And that's all that was. And somebody said, Kev on, stri- Kev on stage ain't straight. That was a funny comment. Look, we've worked together. I don't know much personal shit about the nigga. I have no negativity for him. You know what I'm saying? But in the world of men, a lot of you women will never understand that unless you had a father. Sometimes shit gets ugly. Kev McCall just told a story about his pops, who probably love him more than anybody in the world, mm-hmm. came in while he was working on his craft and unplugged the motherfucking keyboard and erased all his music and he had to square off with his own motherfucking father. You think I'm gonna hesitate to square off with a nigga I think if I think is wrong? If another, if, you know what I'm saying? If another nigga's willing to square up with his father over principle, why wouldn't I square up with a nigga that I ain't related to over principle? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is principle. Sometimes you gotta you gotta draw a line in the sand just to let motherfuckers know where you're coming from. But we 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 gonna we gonna, we gonna get past that. It's back to care. Deuces, man. Sometimes not saying nothing like what you're saying. Sometimes just sitting there and not saying nothing is worse yeah. than doing evil in this world. Yeah, really. You got a responsibility uh, as a gatekeeper. That's all. So that's crazy. Saying yeah. nothing is worse. Sometimes saying nothing is worse than doing evil. Nigga, do you know how deep that is? Because some motherfuckers won't. That, that's so, man. I mean, you see it, but you you, you just going to be oblivious to it because you really don't have no dog in the fight. That's that's real shit. That's and bullshit. you accepting it. But when yeah. you accept that other people are watching, so what's that going to do? Yeah. That's going to make other motherfuckers accept it and think it's yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. You ever ran exactly. into similar situations? Man. Unless y'all just want to go right. To one, the I could think, think of one big right now, and then y'all, y'all could take because y'all good at this. Y'all some motherfucking man. But people always talk about the Me Too movement, right? We don't talk about how that happens to men, and then it's a lot of men in this industry who, who've been molested. A lot of child stars have been molested. Facts. So you think about you know you taking this kid's star, you sucking them off in the in the trailer, and then you saying sign this paperwork. Yeah. What kind of shit is that? Wow. Right. What what type of things are you, what type of control do you have over this person? Yeah, you know what I'm true. saying? And I happen to work with somebody. It's not my story to tell, but yeah. y'all can put two and two together. Right. The person I, I work with, look up to and admire, he went through that. He was a child star. Yeah. So I see how, you know, the Me Too movement shit came on him. I came on Mike. Like, I think Mike was prayed on. Right. Yeah. yeah hey, if, uh, if, if you want to know more, look, it's a documentary called An Open Secret. It's on YouTube, and it's talking about Child stars that were molested, Ty mm-hmm. Bridges mm-hmm. and the dude Corey Feldman and all them. Mm-hmm. It's a documentary de- detailing all that stuff. So this it's just real out here. Yeah, that's why people got to have compassion. The whole thing they gonna edit, they gonna edit whatever happened. They're gonna edit it to, for their benefit, and if there's a black man involved, they're gonna make him look really bad. Like you saw what Kwame Brown said. If y'all been watching some of his videos, he talked about how he had that amazing story. But then on the Oprah show, Oprah wanted him to come on and talk bad about his dad, basically, and he wouldn't do it because his dad was in jail. Yeah, and basically, shit. ever since he turned down, like the only time they want to talk to him is when it came time to shit yeah, on a right. black man. Yeah. So and then when, and when it comes same thing when it comes to a lot of those reality shows, they're always going to slant it in a way that's going to make a black man look bad. Right, because we the kings of this motherfucker. We the creators. You gotta keep a lie up twenty four seven. Because if you just shut up and stop lying for one day, the world will see black men how we really are. Right, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So to have compassion for a lot of the shit when you see on TMZ. Fuck them. It's amazing how much we've contributed to this culture. You know, from regular everyday work shit inventions to uh, to entertainment. You know what I'm saying? To fucking the medical field. To you know, even police work in the military, you know, uh, architecture, all these things that we just contributed since we've been in this country for this short amount of time. It's crazy how we can contribute so much to a country that still refuses to, to give us an equal opportunity when it comes to the way they market us. You know what I'm saying? Or how they respect us publicly, the opportunities we're given. We're the most stepped on culture in this country bro in the world, in the world. In the, you, you know what i'm saying world. you know but i'm speaking specifically in this country yeah. in the world for sure but here it's just crazy because yeah. it's so recent yeah. you, you, i want to just say somebody said it's not our culture yes the fuck it is stop saying that stuff it's not our culture we are the culture right we allow others to put their face on what the fuck we do all the time go ahead and watch that documentary on netflix <laughs> about the about black cuisine being the cuisine of america right. the music wow. Nigga, Benjamin Banneker invented, designed Washington, D.C. and the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. Right. So it, this this is our culture. We just got to claim it. Yeah. And, we, and, we, and when we claim it and when we step up and like Craig said, have some motherfucking courage. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe motherfuckers will stop stealing it. We get this shit away. Niggas, niggas, they think stripping and twerking is the culture. Yeah, yeah that's what that's, niggas the, that's, is, that's entertainment. Niggas is not, uh, America's number one export, bro. Ever since <laughs> back, back since it was cotton. Now yeah, the number, now it's hip hop. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everything goes through all us and it's like that's why they control our minds so young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you get a nigga that is thinking like, okay, I need to make something happen in my community because there's nobody else that's gonna help us. Right. Right. These young niggas think like, okay, all I gotta do is get the bag, mm-hmm. and everything gonna be good. Nah, bro. The bag ain't shit. The bag ain't shit. They can take that bag, nigga. Real quick. <laughs> bro. They can take that bag. Make you want to kill yourself. Because yeah. people did it. Because that, but you know what that is? That's they letting that bag be their identity. Yeah. So once you take the identity away, they nigga, they, they who are you? Right. And you looking at you looking at the bad bitch. You didn't got that post on Instagram. You can't take her out no more. You can't do this. You know what I'm saying? The the, the clubs you can just walk into. Niggas is like, hold on, fam. <laughs> Where you yeah. going? Oh no no my nigga, you gotta ask whoop de whoop like nah I talk. You he telling my story right now. He done read my. Oh no, nah. <laughs> nah. Cause that's exactly what the fuck happened. Just like I said in the locker room, once you get hurt, everybody the trainer start. I don't got no tape for you, nigga. Like right yeah. right right. Once yeah. your stats is different, three so yards same thing of happened in the entertainment bro. industry with you. Oh, yeah. with People stop uh, letting you in the clubs and. You know what I'm saying? They feel like, like especially with people, when I start talking truth to power, like Craig is doing, I start talking about, hey, you know, I don't like this record deal we got going with. I was quiet for a long time. Right. But people start being like, oh, K-Mac, you falling off, and da 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 I'm like, man, talk to your boy. Right. Like, and I'm willing to work with him, but talk to your boy. So once I put that out there, somebody brought this new term into me. Y'all could tell me what y'all think about this, if y'all think it's true or not. This dude who was trying to extort me at the time is a gangster. He's a blood. Right. Uh, but he's from Louisiana. Right. But uh, he was out here. He was an OG. And a lot of I had a lot of different instances where people try to extort me in a sense. But they what? come off like a fatherly, like a fatherly uh. figure. But they don't know, like, I, I ain't in no gangs or nothing. My, uh. I got family from Bloods and Crips. I've been in the frat. So I know, I don't know, how, I know how courtship go, and I'm just not no fool. Right. So everybody who wanted to mend this Chris Brown relationship, this beef, uh, it felt like the Hegelian dialect, like out of chaos comes order. Let's cause a problem so we could fix it. Right. Let's cause a, the problem between the Crips and the Bloods so we could be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I felt like um, I don't even want to dive into that. I was talking about how in 92 yeah, they already yeah, had yeah, the yeah, truce, right, right, but right. you know how the truce got fucked up. Yeah, right, yeah. right. We know so, how the truce got fucked up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't even want to go into that. Yeah. Me and Chris Brown, I felt like our beef was manufactured. Yeah. I don't really realize, I don't know what the, I know what the incentive is because if you mend us together, now you can feel like you got, uh. you the one who brought me and Chris Brown together. Right. Now you the big homie and I owe you. <laughs> okay, so but, let's get, let's, Let's backtrack. So we, we'll get to how it, it even started, and 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 we had deuces. We had deuces. So <laughs> so so you so you and Chris create do you create deuces with Chris, or you created by yourself and he buys it for you? How did that work? So we did the mixtape by ourselves in Virginia. Come back and do well. He started to hang out with a lot of rappers. Tiger was one of the dudes he started right. trying to hang out with because Tiger was blowing up with Lil Wayne. But Tiger had a lot of style. Like it was just something about Tiger that. We all thought was really unique and cool. I didn't think his rhyming was that dope, but it's right. just something about his, yeah, yeah. his everything, you know. And Chris was really into Tiger. Right. Like Tiger, you probably don't know that, but Chris was a f- huge fan, bro. He just talked about you, studied how you dress, dyed your hair, everything. Right. You know, so he ended up hanging with this guy. He wanted, to, he wanted people to stop looking at him like this pop locking guy. He wanted to show, you know, he he got that pimping in him. He got right. that edge. Yeah. Uh, so. I was like, look, I got some songs for y'all, but hear my shit too. Sent them the songs for Tiger. They used all of those, but Deuces was my my single that I was gonna. I had already put it out. Yeah, and I had it was going crazy on Facebook and shit like that. Played it for him. I guess while he was waiting for me to come out there with Tiger, he like, nigga, I need this record. By the time I got out there with him and Tiger, they started recording it. And nigga Chris kept really like, this shit dope, but your verse kind of whack. Like, do that shit over. And I, thank God he made me do that because I wrote the first part and Man. he had a, he owned like a McDonald's across the street. Oh, wow. A lot of people don't know him. Chris Brown owned a gang of little like McDonald's and shit. Oh, wow. and shit. That's that's crazy. Crazy. So he mm-hmm. sent me to one of them. That, I ain't gonna lie, that's some fly shit. That's some fly shit. Go with my McDonald's. Yeah, go with my McDonald's. That was dope. Ice cream machine work, right? Y'all niggas say that. 
I walk in the back, start grabbing. Bitch, I'm writing the verse. Leave me alone, real quick. Chris said I can do this shit. Nigga, put an extra body on that Big Mac, bitch. I'm writing. Nigga got a studio in the break room, nigga. Boy, boy, right, right, right. <laughs> unisex, bitch, unisex. That's a, okay, go ahead, go ahead. That's a so by the time I came back to the studio, he laid, you know, Chris Brown, one of the fastest recorders <laughs> i ever seen in my life. Only person I know could do his songs literally in five minutes. Yeah. And a lot of the credit was, a lot of people who taught him back in the day, Will I Am, the underdogs. He told me little people who taught him little shit. But uh, Lil Wayne was one of the people who taught him to record real fast and start recording, uh, to start laying melodies and freestyling. That's how he got his style he got now. Mm. My style is like that now, too. Yeah, right, right. right. So by the time I got back, he laid his shit. I started laying my verse. He was telling me some of my parts was weak. I didn't have any sp any spaces. So one space, he like, say, uh, I'm a dick, so it shouldn't be that hard to swallow. I was like, that's hard. Right. So I put that line in there. Chris, that that line is a Chris Brown line. So yeah, yeah. all the people think Chris ain't got bars. He got some. My nigga is saucy with the writing too. Tiger took about four hours to write his his shit. Yeah. <laughs> I left, came Tiger's back. Tiger's kind of weak in the mother. <laughs> That's how I was thinking. I was like, this shit kind of boo boo like. <laughs> and Tiger, I don't mean. I like maybe Tiger. thinking that. Listen to the song like. Did they tell this nigga this shit was what? <laughs> no, he like, had the nerve to say, like, man, I didn't even like this song, you know, when I first heard it. But, oh. you know, I guess y'all like it. And he said that on 106 in Park. And I'm like, nigga, you, uh, uh, you know why, nigga? Said, we know why. Oh, yeah. So, I don't even think I was really supposed to be on there. But I was like, Chris, the only way I'm going to let you have this song, if I stay on it, he was like, I'm going to let you stay on it. With your verse whack, did it over. That's how the shit came out. So we put it out free, and then that shit just was going crazy. Yeah, that shit did. I remember it was bumping that shit on the way to Vegas, back to back. I was like, do it. Freestyling that shit. Yeah. Well, it sucks because I signed the paperwork with him after that first mixtape. It did decent. Everybody was like, oh, who this dude writing? But Carrie Hilson talking to him, like, who writing this? Oh, him? Okay. I signed. But everybody was like, man, if you would have waited till Deuces came out. You could have had leverage with wow. just to sign with the publishing company, they would have gave you three mil. Mm. One mil. Damn. Just to sign with them. I signed for Damn, 50K? Yeah. 50K? That's wild. Damn. A nigga could have had a million plus that 50K because it was, people was like, well, you have the potential to write hits. Now we want you to sign with BMI or sign an ass capper. I was already signed with BMI, oh. so I couldn't use that. So everybody that's watching now, get your hit first and then get your publisher because you could uh, you could start a bidding war. That's deep. I never, I never knew that. And, and, and stop, <laughs> stop calling your shit albums, nigga. You ain't got no seller to fight. None of that's why I think about Why you call that? My shit is always a tape because if I ever do sign with somebody, they not looking at them. They ain't finna look at my streams, nigga. Yeah, I ain't got no leverage, leverage to do nothing. So they like, oh, nigga, well. Your streams didn't, no, 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 that, that's a mixtape, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, when you put money behind it, it's just how it works. Oh, we need this type of money? Yeah, it's different type of negotiation tactics, bro. Yeah, so what, remember that shit, niggas. Yeah, that's what Nip said, too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah that makes that sense as hell like a motherfucker. Yeah, that's one -on -one. I, yeah that's You had I, a question? Oh, yeah, man. I was, uh, I remember I was, uh, like, randomly, bro, I was up there watching, like, a YouTube video. Bro, you was at dinner with some chick. How did that, like, you know what I'm saying, go down as far as, like... In Atlanta? Yeah, I believe so. That shit went viral. So, I'm glad you asked me that. So, this goes into how the media tries to, they chop up shit and try to make you look evil. and It's an agenda. I don't know if this person, I don't even think this person's connected like that. But I was in Atlanta, so I, was, I, was, I wasn't I was sure about it. I was like, mm, no, it's kind of a lot of little plastic surgery going on. It's a little, <laughs> but look, and then let me tell you this too. I was fresh out, right. so meaning I didn't have no bread, I didn't have no phone out there, I didn't have nothing. But I'm not finna fuck with no tranny or nothing like that. Right, 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 right. So I was like, but a fat girl, you know, who pay like she weigh, I might fuck with that. Right, right, right. right, right. And that's what it looked like. So I was like, ah, oh, you got come in the studio. I bring her in the studio. I said, hey, everybody, tell me, check this out. What y'all think this is? Don't say nothing. Just. Mm -hmm. So they didn't there. They like, I mean, it's kind of done up and shit. But that's a woman. That's a woman. I'm like, I don't know. Something don't feel right. <laughs> so she say, let's go to, uh, what is that food place? Houston's? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Go to Houston's. I'm like, I'm finna run it up. Yeah. But a little bit on the way to the ride, she like, 
Start showing me pictures of dildos and shit. She like, you know, niggas like for me to turn him out. Oh, no. oh. Niggas like for me to. <laughs> niggas like for me to. <laughs> and I was like, that nigga said, man. That nigga said, man. So that she started said showing videos through. and videos of niggas who. See, here go one who thought he didn't want it, but look, this I thought I got him, and oh. this the one I used on him. So I'm, uh. she, I'm like, hey. Don't show me no dildos and shit like. <laughs> hey, for real, like, now you disrespect me. I'm a gangster. I'm a whole gangster. Don't show me no bullshit like that. We could go eat. <laughs> we could do that. Right, right. But don't pull out no more dildos. None of don't talk to me like that. Right, right. right. So we get to eating. It's getting good. I start recording. I don't know why I'm recording. <laughs> the motherfuckers start talking about playing in your asshole and all this shit again, and I'm like, look. Yeah. I'm thinking it's still a girl, right, but right. I'm still like, see, this more reason why this gotta be a tranny or something. Right, 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 right. Now, now, this get this on the way there, they lift up and they show me. No, and like this, like pulled it to the side, right? It was no dick. Right, right. And I'm like, mm, my baby mama done told me about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> my baby mama told me, even she, she know about the shit. Like, niggas in Atlanta be doing that bullshit, like. Right? I'm like, but I could tell. It's the energy. It's the shoulders. It's the... Yeah. yeah. I'm tearing this food up fresh out of jail, though. I don't give a fuck. the basketball by that. <laughs> <laughs> like, my... <laughs> She's still coming with the disrespectful, like, let me fuck you in your ass type shit with a strap on. Right. So no. what you saw was me checking her, like, look, I don't care how much food you put on this plate. Right. I don't care what I'm going through. Don't ever disrespect the gangster like that. Like I don't know what you be doing with these other Atlanta niggas, but don't bring that shit to me. I throw all this food on the, right, on the ground. Right. But they made it like I'm talking to a chick like this, right? And that I'm this abusive person, and I'm in Atlanta. I already didn't tried to chase my baby mama down and got in a fight in the escalator. Really, right. I went to jail because I didn't have no ID. Right, right, right. So then Please, like TMZ, yeah. TMZ. Okay, one more time. Oh, I went to I, I went to jail because I had no I, no ID, and if. If you don't present your ID when they ask right. you for it, that is a crime. Right, yeah. right, right. He thought I was doing that and went through everything like, damn, this nigga really don't got no ID. Right. He go through my backpack looking for drugs. It's books I done got from Tanishi Coates and uh, Claude Anderson and shit like that, Powernomics and shit. It's like, right. why are you fucking with me, bro? I'm really just trying to right. yeah. see yeah. my daughter. I was just trying to document it because yeah. I, I don't got no person behind me following me. You know, right, I want her to right. see. It's a nigga out here be crying, losing sleep over you. Right, <clears throat> but you know, it, the story got twisted all kind yeah. of ways, and then they was using that to make me look like some bad guy. But you got some tranny talking about fucking me in the ass. Right, right, right. They should have yeah. ran the yeah. audio. Yeah. They would have heard you saying, "Look, dude, get the fuck up, man." <laughs> <laughs> get up. My nigga. That's and it be people problem, like. Man. That's why I say like you gotta always separate good and bad people from whatever the, you talking about LGBT. You talking about white supremacy. It's bad black people, it's bad people right, in gangs, it's right. good people in gangs. Right. It's just good and bad and everything. But when you when y'all do stuff like that, that's what make people do things to you and and, and, and hurt your, your yeah. community. Because people like me, I don't have a problem with you, but you don't be in niggas DMs showing your asshole and stuff like that. Like some of us don't we don't wanna see that. Yeah, like, yeah, you, that, you can't do that. Like that's that, that's that's man on man conversation. I don't give a fuck what they say they are. That's still man on man issues. But they trying to even if a woman is talking to you like that, it's like chill, it's sis. Like what do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. we don't do that. Like, what are you talking about? They go so hard. They go so hard trying to be like. I, I'm she is I'm a she Tell them how they do Big Nasty You were he was Big Nasty You straight nasty Big Nasty Oh no I'm just, hey, yo, 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 I'm yo, yo, yo. just saying yo, 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 yo. I'm not Hey That should be pissing me off Like They want to claim and say Oh I'm a uh, No I'm a she now I'm, uh, I'm, be, I'm a she That's what I am No 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 You were he was But you, see that's a cold situation Cause A lot of niggas Ain't gonna admit this A lot of niggas Have been hollered at by a nigga And didn't realize it Man Second base, man. <laughs> <laughs> a nigga got the second base from here. And I didn't even know it. Y'all that dinner, nigga? Hell no. I, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> 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 Motherfucker was on base with me. That nigga got a single and kept going. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened? That nigga. That nigga. That nigga. That nigga, that, that, that nigga knew all five of that nigga albums. <laughs> I'm at I'm at Venice Beach. I'm at Venice Beach hooping. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. 
So it was when I was in college hooping. I still was one of the coldest niggas on the court. So what my, me and my boys used to do was at least once a month, we would go to Venice and run the court. You feel me? Anybody know Venice Beach, yeah, though, when there's some games going on, there'd be hundreds of people yeah, standing by the court cool. watching. So if you was a real hooper, that was like a baby NBA type situation where you can clown as bad bitches around, niggas and tripping off of what you're doing. So we out there dunking and doing crazy shit. <laughs> and we win, you know, a few games in a row. And one of the games we stop and we start having a dunk contest in between the game. So I'm waiting, you know what I'm saying? And I'm waiting. I got my shirt off. I'm on super swole. You know what I'm saying? I'm young. I'm 21. I'm nice, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I hear a nigga say, hey, hey, hey. And I turn around. He say, he said, my name is Maestro. I said, all right, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this is what the nigga did to me, bro. He say, have you ever thought about being a model? Mm. The nigga appealed to my ego. Damn. <laughs> my first thought after that was like, yeah, I've been, I mean, I, I, I always knew I had a talent. <laughs> I got a studio. I get I get a lot of dudes work. You know what I'm saying? I can get you some pictures. Give them that work. That's what they do, right? Test shots. Test right. Get you some shots. Really? Uh, Give me your number. Game. I'll call you and come down to the studio to take some pictures. I'm like, yeah, for sure. It's all good, my nigga. I, but I'm, my not nigga. Even, <laughs> I'm not even paying Just attention. Because you already know L.A. Like, when we younger, even though we live in L.A., like, it ain't Hollywood. You don't see a lot right. of it. You don't yeah. see that weird shit in the You city. don't see it. Like, it's niggas we grow up with that's gay, but we don't even look at them like that. That's just little Billy. Like, nigga, he yeah, fuck with yeah, niggas, right. but it ain't like no, we don't think no way about it. <laughs> right. So... Nigga get my number. So me and my father have the same exact name. I'm the second. He's the first. So uh, get my number to the house. I'm at the house chilling. It's two, three days later. Uh, <coughs> Pops is in the next room. The phone ring. He answered it. And I hear him say, hello? <laughs> and then I hear him say, uh, why the fuck you talking like that? And he said, my, I don't know no goddamn maestro nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like, maestro, and he probably thinking the nigga like a rapper or something. Right? He's like, man, look, man, you must be, you must want to talk to my son. Right? He put the phone down. Uh, he started yelling my name, Craig, come here, nigga, come here. <laughs> He says a nigga on his on the phone say his name is Maestro or some shit like that. He sounds oh, sweet than a motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 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 Is this is this some shit you want to tell me about? <laughs> right here, right now. <laughs> yeah. I, said, I don't I don't know what you talk about. Bro. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean this nigga sounds sweet? So you hand me the phone. I say hello, and then I hear hello. <laughs> I say, oh, this nigga. Is <laughs> yeah, they got a, a talent. So so it's a nigga. Where did you get in it, person? Man. I didn't. He. I couldn't hear the sweetness. I wasn't even focused on the nigga. Uh -huh. I had never had a nigga try to holler yeah, at me, yeah, so yeah, I wasn't yeah. paying attention like that. Yeah. He just hit me with the modeling thing, right. and, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, oh, money, let's get to this money. Right. That's what I'm he thinking. Slid him the number. So I said, hello. He said, hello. I said, oh, this nigga. Oh, yeah. right. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> he like, look, man, um, I got some time at the studio today. You want to come down and take some pictures? He said, I got some Hennessy and some Hypnotic. <laughs> <laughs> I got them incredible no, hump. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Set up a solo oil yeah. wrestling match, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. gonna oil wrestle by yourself. Yeah. So let's go over your wardrobe. <laughs> right. Right. So Kev, he said, I got some Hennessy and some hypnotic. My response was, oh, it's going to be some bitches it's, in the studio. Yeah. He said, no, just you. No, no. no. He put no. that shit in you the Gatorade. Bitch. <laughs> you bitch, nigga. I said, you know what, bro? I said, shot, shot with all due love and respect, my nigga, he said, nah. do yeah, I said, bro. don't call me no more, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I don't know what you thought this was, bro, but it'll fuck around and be a long day for you. Man. <laughs> I ain't got no issues with who you are and whatever you do, but I'm not yeah. I'm not that, my nigga. So don't call this number no more. Man, for real. You feel me? And then I just hung up. But the nigga can tell people, oh, Craig Smith? 
Oh, oh I got the jacket. Mama gave me his number and everything. He backed out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost had it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I even got him with the hypnotic. I mean, we was, we was really close. You're going to have you like, so <laughs> lay on your back. Lay on your so stomach it, and on your back. If you get if you, <laughs> if you, if you a gay somewhere. person. <laughs> He's a nigga on the calendar somewhere. If you a gay person <laughs> and you use deception to try to trick somebody out of a heterosexual and this you're yeah. a coward. Well, and on top of that, I like that. I like it's called a pop fly. I like that. I like <laughs> pop, pop fly. fly. I mean, a nigga running the second somebody for the catch that shit. You are out. <laughs> <laughs> and look, if you, if you if you do some shit under false pretenses, I think you're borderline molester. Yeah, really. That's that, that's yeah. molestation. Predatory. It's predatory. Yeah, that's predatory yeah, sexual yeah. behavior. That's molestation. You yeah, go around yeah. so you have one person thinking it's one thing and it's something else. And then you can't say we all the same, goddamn it, because two men in the same room fucking stink. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. It's just a nasty ass smell. Boy, man, that be room you fucking man, stink, nigga. Man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but niggas, niggas. <laughs> this nigga Dozy right here smell like. You smell like the Serengeti over here. Oh, yeah, Dozy, 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 she knew you're your bad, hey, your bad built ass. Talking about, talking about, uh, <laughs> shut your bad built ass up. Oh, look, I'm talking, look I'm talking about you, nigga. You what y'all don't know is that nigga Dozy has been on TV. <laughs> <laughs> what he say? Right, so right, 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 let's go. Are we gonna get it going? Right, let's say classic. The same way. Yeah, the same way. Your joke is hilarious. That nigga took a deep breath. Let's get let's get into it. Talk about it. You made a TV. You made a TV appearance before, haven't you? Nigga, you was on TV when you was three on that old charity commercial, nigga. You was. <laughs> With the flies in your head, big stomach having ass, nigga. <laughs> go ahead. Let's go. Let's go. Keep going. Got that, that head up the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> you got them chains from the gas station, nigga. <laughs> Give me 20 on 8 and give me them two chains right there, nigga. I didn't say that about my watch. All right. Yeah, about my watch. You the same joke. Oh, you got your silly joke? We recycle it. Mario. Uh, <laughs> Mario yeah. Ellie looking ass, nigga. This nigga, dog. You leave it to that nigga to bomb out. He can't help himself. Y'all do look like the Rockets team. Vernon <laughs> <laughs> <Martin> Maxwell. <laughs> Otis Thor. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga look dog from the Utah Jazz. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Sam right. Cassell. Sam Cassell. Uh, Sam 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 <laughs> Sam oh, okay. Champion, champion. The champion. Are you going to Yeah, I'm going to Ike Oh, I'm going to Ike Yeah. That nigga look like Sedale 3, nigga. Derek Harper. Make sure y'all smash hard. the like button, man. We uh, we should be at thousands of likes, man. We should be at. Where we at? How many likes we got? We only had uh, thirteen hundred likes. How many people? Oh, in cut there? it out. Twenty four hundred. Oh, we should have twenty four hundred likes. Fuck that. Man, come on, y'all, Kev. Okay, so bam, we we, uh, we make good. deuces. Um, it does really well. Blow up. Now we have <laughs> brought my boy back. Right, brought your boy back. Brought you brought Chris Brown back after the whole Rihanna thing. Um, now now we realize, damn, we could have got more. If we would have signed a publishing deal after we signed for fifty, but we could have got two mil. Yeah. Okay. So is this is is this where the Chris Brown relationship starts to get a little bit uh, stra uh, strained, or is it, it is it after that? It's right in this area. See, first Chris Brown used to go to bat for me, right? I used to see a lot of instances where people would hate on me. Like I remember we performed at the uh, Staples Center. I don't remember what year that was, but Chris Brown, Tiger, we came out and did the song. I come up out the shirt. I had been working out, doing two a days for like two weeks, and uh, nigga was on swole. Yeah, yeah. Chris loved it. Right. Chris was like, look at my nigga on swole, and da da da. You would think Chris would be some insecure, you know, just light skin complex yeah, type yeah, shit. Yeah. People always say, no, nah, he would not. He wasn't like that at all, bro. I promise you. At first. So then Tiger sends <laughs> Tiger sends like his role manager like, hey, try to do it without Chris looking. Come back to my manager. Hey, Tiger saying, you know, when you perform, can you not take off your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on with that? Yeah, no, he didn't what say did that. He did. So I go Keep and tell Chris, I'm like, 
Cause I thought Chris had something to do with it too. I'm like, man, nigga Tiger talking about he's like that nigga's a buster. That nigga's a bitch. Nigga, <laughs> nigga keep your shirt off, nigga. You swole like nigga just K Mac. Like that's what we fuck right, with. Like fuck that fuck? nigga. Damn. Don't ever listen to no other nigga. Like and I'm like, I, I like that. Right. Yeah. And I felt like at that point, I felt like I, I gotta start managing myself. Like I don't need a Chris Brown to really have my back. Like I need right. to be having my own back. Mm -hmm. You know, but I thought I would be able to get out the deal after twelve songs. Got them two left. I'm gonna keep putting that out there. Whoever wanna collab, y'all could be in on that. Right, Might right. need them drum yeah. packs. Okay. Yeah, need yeah, them sir. bars. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Y'all can help me get out this shit. So it's like um that shit tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> the shit blew up. Right start feeling like I have a little more work. Niggas stopped really inviting me to the studio because I realized the the record label was taking all my money when I would have sessions. I'm writing for other people, but I get my fifty thousand dollar check back, it's twenty thousand taken out. For studio fees right so i say okay let me build my own studio i could be written that out having people come through right. I, I could be making money you know right, right. I, I wasn't doing that i was just letting people use it for free yeah. didn't think that way yeah. but i kind of was using it more like a uh it was like a halfway house a lot of people who didn't have homes y'all know what that studio in prs was like where gucci man did trap god Marilyn Manson came through there. Y'all know everybody who know. I used to let everybody just spend a night on the floor. Marilyn Manson came and hung out with you. Yeah, bro. Nigga, how does that? Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, right, right, right. Eating bats and shit. Got to go home. Like Marilyn, why you not sleeping? Nigga in the corner, like staring at you. Nigga, please. Oh, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Marilyn, it was 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 it where he had like titties and shit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember the shit was I was weirded out. I didn't know what was looking. My mom was like, "You can't watch that shit. That shit weird." Right. Right. So when I met him again, I was like, "I still want to fuck with you just to make my mama mad. Like right. just just be rebellious. That rebellious culture, right. like, cause I grew up Christian my whole life. Right, 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 right. So the way I met the nigga though was I fucked with a lot of like street niggas, like BMF niggas yeah. who from LA. He from the Black Mafia? No. Say <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You finna see how I go. Say it again for DMZ. Y'all gonna it's gonna be easy to connect the dots. But this will show you how this will show you how like six degrees of separation is so crazy. You always know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Right, right, right. So my manager, which is my frat brother, didn't have any. Uh, he wasn't in the game, but he used to work for BET, so he had some. He knew some people, right. so I used him for them connections and just people he knew in the street too. Even though he had a degree and all that, he was a street nigga too. But he didn't get in too much trouble. So some of the people he knew from back in the day, they was in BMF. I fuck with a nigga named Twin, right. who used to manage Jeezy and Gucci. Yeah. So when Twin came back, yeah, this little kid from your side of town, like he introduced me to Gucci, right? Twin. Right. So by fucking with Gucci, I would always let him use my studio free, get him some other stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. on the low, definitely, definitely. And, and Gucci started loving me. He did some movie called Spring Breakers. I'm right. That. Yeah. Marilyn Manson come to the red carpet, throw stink bombs at everybody. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is Gucci man, first time he didn't even know who he was. Oh, good. So yeah, Gucci I, I, was I, like, yeah, yeah, some nigga threw smoke stink bombs at us and, and Spring Breakers, and I was like, yeah, I'm Gucci, come back to the studio. But he was using my studio. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This nigga Gucci bring Walker, uh, 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 what's the young Dolph. That was my first time meeting him. Yeah. Young Scooter, Pee Wee the Long Way. All these niggas in my studio. He's a man. What the Juice Man, nigga? I wasn't no OJ the Juice Man. Uh, but, but, but Marilyn Manson was with him. Then Gucci nigga, that like, is so weird. Gucci yeah, like, right, right. Gucci like, I got Marilyn Manson coming through. I met him on a red carpet. He want to do some shit. Cold part, Marilyn Manson was really on some satire shit. He was really kind of. Clowning Gucci. Really? Yeah, because the nigga gave me a book. He gave me like some book, like a nigga, I'm not a nigger boy. Or, it was some book where it's like a black boy head, like it's backwards. I wish I knew the name of the book. That nigga had to get out. Yeah. yeah. He gave me some book that looked kind of like. What is you saying with this, my nigga? Yeah. When I read the book, I didn't, it was written in code. I didn't really understand it. Right. So I thought it was a. Uh, witchcraft or something that's the first thing i jumped to but i don't know what it was but it was definitely racist right, right. and they had a little black boy with his head backwards and he's in a suit like this and i'm gonna figure out what that book is right 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 um, Corey, Corey he gave me, called him out for that. yeah he gave me that book he started stop fucking with gucci because he seen gucci was just doing the trap shit i started showing the nigga like rock and roll shit like he's like dang you really talented 
So then he started trying to put shit in my head. He's like, you're so dark. Nah. Right? And I'm like, Shh, I'm so dark. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, Right, right. He's like, nah, you, 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 you write good music and all that, but it's really a darker side. Mm. I was like, I could act dark. Like, let me try some. You want to see some dark shit? I'm just playing with him. Yeah. So the nigga gets in my studio. It's just me, him. He got like some white dude that do whatever he say. He's like, this is my slave. He, he's like, <laughs> he's like, I've been I've been studying him since I was in middle school, and I finally just get to work for him. I do whatever he wants. Probably was fucking him. Oh um, wow! But the nigga was an engineer and played guitar too. So yeah, he slave. recording us. This nigga sits down in the middle of the booth when I'm finna record, sits Indian style and goes like this. Oh, no. No, no, no. And I'm singing, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm singing some real, some soulful shit. Yeah. Nigga singing, nigga singing amazing grace. I'm singing, I'm singing seven years old. I buke these motherfucking demons in here, goddamn. There you go. You're a beautiful man. He didn't tell you that. He told me that. This Marilyn Manson, I'm like, dang, so is this... This is that this with the Illuminati. I thought he was trying to court me on. Yeah, right. So then after I just would ignore it, you know what I'm saying? And right, I try to she, I'll try to have fade instead of fuck me <laughs> <up>. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's like porno hell, man. Like a little nigga. Cut, he, it was my birthday, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, man, I'm invite as many, it's about as many as y'all it is. I was like, I'm inviting a homie. Like, you want me to come for your birthday, but you've been sending me a lot of weird texts. Right. The way he would keep in contact with me, he was saying, like, midget porn. Well, he was oh, saying no. porn. It was straight, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just ignore him. Like, I guess he's just a weirdo. If I just keep it going, maybe I'll get a song with him, get the Grammy. Right. Right. I never really had to do nothing, but I didn't. The way he was trying to play Gucci, man, and make sat satire of the whole trap life, and you really this white boy don't really fuck with us. Right. I was going to try to flip it on him. Right, 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 right. So, nigga calling <laughs> for it. Nigga just love with Kevin McCall, right? But I'll just be like, hey, don't say weird shit. Or if he did, I'll just ignore him. Yeah. One day he went in a room full of people like this. He go, I wish I had a Ziploc bag full of infant penises. And he stopped and look at everybody. And I look around. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Turn on the music. Like, just ignoring yeah, him. I right. try to make like the shit was just mm -hmm. yeah. for attention. Because right, I knew right. it was a method to his madness. He... He was a really brilliant person. You know who he's, who he's mimicking that a lot of people don't know of? There was this Russian dude named Rasputin. Oh, yeah. He's mm -hmm. mimicking Rasputin. Like 40, 50% of his whole persona is Rasputin. Look up Rasputin. The Anastasia nigga? Uh, talking about Rasputin. Ra oh, okay, Rasputin. Okay. Rasputin, my bad. <laughs> no, no, I thought you were talking about Rasputin. I said, I'm tripping. Yeah, Rasputin. <laughs> Rasputin. Norman. 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 <laughs> he was an eccentric, you like a really eccentric faith healer in Russia at mm -hmm. the turn of the century. And basically, uh, he was able to con his way from being just this dirt poor guy in Russia that faked miracles to the advisor to the uh, to the Archduke Ferdinand's wife, and uh, I'm sorry, to the to the advisor of the Queen of Russia or whatever it was called. I don't know if it was called Prussia or something at that point, but it wasn't well. Russia. <clears throat> and basically, um, he was the reason why they got killed because he was advising their moves medically and politically. So they had a son that had uh, who was a hemophiliac. And he told the wife, uh, the queen, that the cure was aspirin. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, if you have a hemophilia, that's basically if you get cut, you keep bleeding. Yeah. You don't stop yeah. bleeding. Well, aspirin makes the blood thin. Mm -hmm. So that's the wrong thing. Wrong. Right. Right. Yeah. So he gave her that advice and basically right. so bled to death. You know what I mean? And that was kind of like a part of his demise, amongst other things. But he was a really eccentric dude that would do shit like what, uh, what you're talking about. They had him in that cartoon, Anastasia. Yeah, okay. About the czar when he had to, they had to leave and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Look, up, look up his real life uh, story, Rasputin. That shit crazy. Okay, we're going to go ahead. We're going to finish that story. But yeah, anyway, I, I was flirting with the dark side just to see what was over there because I heard, you know, I, I learned about God, but I was like, let me see, is the devil real? Yeah, I wanted to see. Right, I did. Right. I didn't want to fuck with it, but right. I wanted to just... Right, right. Can I be a Christian and be around this? Can I change him? Can right. I just still make my money in this industry if it is that way? Uh, so then the nigga invite me and my baby mama to a concert with Aldis Snow. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. And it was the most evil shit I ever seen. I bet. And then he was like, uh, that's my first time seeing cocaine. He was like, you want something? I was like, nah, I did, did too much already. <laughs> like, that was my way I would be around people who did a lot of crazy shit. Right. But now I had to do it, I'd be like, nah, I did too much yeah, already. That's how you yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. fucked off, nigga. I did too much. I'm so they still was letting me hang out. Then he was like, I want you and your baby mom to um, come to Florida for my birthday. We're going to really party. And 
before his birthday, he took me out on my birthday. This is the last thing I'm going to say about the Marilyn Manson. And I'm like, bro, I'm not coming to your house by myself. Right. Get there with like 10 niggas Straight, like this. Scared as a motherfucker at yeah. this weird white boy. He man. Man. <laughs> I didn't fuck with this nigga, bro. Yeah. Oh my he pulls out some shit called absinthe, which is oh, illegal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It got wormwood in it. And when you drink this drink, Oof. it make you hallucinate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not even legal out here. You heard of no. yeah, yeah, Amsterdam? Yeah. 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 Amsterdam. 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 You can't it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the real shit. He yeah. had it. He yeah. had to export it. He had, he had, had it from England. England. He get it from the UK. Yeah. Yeah. He had the real shit. So yeah. one of my homies take it, dumbass. Damn. And then Marilyn Manson had like a bunch of projectors. He got a bunch of books. He got skeletons, like props. Yeah. Stuff like that. And, uh. He had a wheelchair. So my homeboy playing in a wheelchair, <laughs> Willie, and then got drunk off the shit. He run over Marilyn Manson foot. Like, ah, shit. And I'm like, God damn, I was embarrassed. <laughs> but I was happy, too. I was like, that's what you get for all that gay shit. Right, right, right. Real niggas in here and ran over your foot. Right, right, right. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's like, everybody, just calm down. I want to show Kevin something. Uh -huh. So he puts a movie on, and uh, his wife lays down on the floor, kind of where I'm sitting at. His wife bad? She was kind of bad, but she looked like... She fuck with some shit yeah, like yeah, 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 she yeah. had like I don't like when white girls be having like bruises and shit oh, on yeah, them like yeah. oh, like, like I look like somebody was beating, beating her, her or something like right, right, she was right. fine though right right she might be famous I don't I don't know her but put on a movie and the devil is fucking this white man wife the devil is black whatever this movie is it's a comedian you know that comedian play the piano too yeah Craig, Craig Robinson. Robinson thank you thank you guys I know you this is the Oh, At no, the no, end no. of the it's movie. A, it's a movie where Craig Robinson is the devil. Right. He's the, it's, a, it's a movie. I've seen that shit. So they get to the scene where the devil trying to like get at the nigga wife and Marilyn Manson and his wife just keep looking at me and going... Like, ah, like, 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 like this cock, like they trying to get you like, the <laughs> And then everybody else is watching. I'm like, but well, there's other people right here. So we got a bull, yes. I look and my nigga like, nigga, he went to the fuck his bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, this Hollywood shit weird. We out of here. Uh, <laughs> well, we go, we go, we go, man, you come back. I gotta come back. I gotta come back. We 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 gotta come back. What's the name of your album? Like, I keep forgetting. Oh, uh, sure uh, Chill Withers, goddamn. <laughs> Get that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, fuck with, uh, I think my nigga Charlie got some shit popping, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with that nigga comedy shit. Fuck with this nigga shit. I don't know what you got going on. Taco Tuesdays and shit. Fuck with everybody shit, man. Everybody on the panel, dude, I definitely gonna fuck with this nigga on some music. Autobots, I don't know who my nigga in the back is, but that's good, though. My nigga Corrupt Jr., you know what I'm saying? Nah, but we feel I'm saying everybody on the club. We all doing our thing here, so fuck with this podcast. My nigga on this motherfucker, you did your thing, my nigga. Definitely need you back, bro. We didn't get past deuces. Man. Oh, we didn't get past deuces. We got to do it for two weeks. We got to do it for two weeks. We got to do it for two weeks. Oh, nigga. That's a whole series. Camp stories is a whole series. We got to do it for yeah, check me out, man. Uncle Todd Comedy, IG, Twitter, uh, the album, Uncle Todd, I'm out there. It's got Taco Tuesday. It's got Blame the Bartender. Um, I'm about to be dropping my Russia stories, telling y'all the untold stories from Russia. So uh, check me out, man. I'm out there. Yo, what's up, man? It's Be Your Boy, The Real DJ Show, man. Make sure y'all follow me on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram. If you want to get your music played, come to uh, the free music reviews for all independent artists. I might shout y'all niggas out. You dig me? I just stole But yeah. <laughs> For y'all indie artists, man, make sure y'all tap in, man. He got a czar story, too. That's funny. <laughs> oh, uh, it's your boy Kevin McCall, man. Y'all been great. You can find me on all platforms Twitter, Instagram, Kevin McCall underscore. Official and I'll follow you back. You know, I like to see what y'all talking about and just stay tuned. I'm gonna keep showing y'all what I'm doing. I'm writing a book about my life and these stories that y'all been hearing. Um, I'm actually taking four months break just to really get all this done. I'm doing a documentary, writing a book, so I won't have no distractions. It's really like a, a what you call that, a detox, a electronic detox, yeah. so I could really get this project out here because it's been hindered for a long time and it's gonna help me get my daughter. So. Yes, yes, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No.
I need y'all to get uh, Chill Withers ASAP. I was bumping, yeah. I was bumping Friendly Fire in the gym oh, yeah, today, yeah, nigga. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's the beat, the, the shit, nigga. I was ready to push up as much weight as I could yeah. in there, man. So shout out to Chill Withers. Cop that sapiosexual, man. Cop yeah, DeWine's yeah. book. I agree. I agree with Dunk. Everybody here at the table got something awesome. going, man. You know what I'm saying? So, and we all support each other. So it's 100. <laughs> Check me out on IG. I am Charlie Newhart. Check me out on YouTube. Charlie Duhart. But yeah, you got to come back, though. We need a whole Kev series, yeah. nigga. Yeah, I like this week. nigga telling the truth. Your life is a book, my yeah, nigga. Man. Man. So he's interesting. I'm going to try to put it together, and it's funny. I didn't even want to come out, bro. I've been on some... That's why I try to talk about depression, stuff like that, isolation. Yeah. You might be trying to wait till you just so perfect. And, and look at the response I got. I didn't, I didn't want to come because I just... Doubt myself, so don't doubt yourself so much. My comedy special is dropping July 27th, man. So I'm dropping a comedy special, a book, and a shirt. It's just going to be a bundle pack y'all can get for the 50 ball on my website, man. So holla at me. July 27th, it's called I Am Dirt Bag. Do that hat come with it? It hurt. Nigga, you got a ragu menu on your arm, nigga. Look at that, nigga. That nigga, that nigga dressed, that nigga dressed like a '90s rollerblade coach, nigga. <laughs> 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 Walking on the side of the soles of your shoes, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't lace the motherfucking oh, tight ass boomers up, nigga. My nigga. Hey, you, you got you that shirt from Hip Hop Abs, nigga. Chill, fucking tight and looking ass. Hip Hop Abs. Every time you laugh, your shirt jiggle, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, shut your, your stomach in your lap. Your shut stomach in your lap right now, nigga. nigga. <laughs> you in your third trimester, nigga. Oh, nigga you your <laughs> <laughs> shut your celery sipping ass up, nigga. That <laughs> <laughs> nigga got a shake weight, nigga. <laughs> Show know how to chew with his ass. <laughs> nigga, dude. <laughs> I look like you had a <laughs> Craig looked like he had a strong snuck. Oh shit! What the fuck, <laughs> nigga? Oh. <laughs> nigga, <laughs> weird nigga. <laughs> that nigga, <laughs> that nigga's a weird nigga. <laughs> that nigga looked like he had a hard sneeze when his barber lined him up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that nigga show had me concerned. He knew all the details of that trans story in Atlanta, nigga. Like, so tell us what that was about. I mean, it, nigga, every time he, he said trans, this nigga Charlie mouth watered. Pause, nigga. Pause, pause. That's why that nigga happy. Pause. Che, 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 Bequena. <laughs> Don't let that nigga go. <laughs> right, regular underscore DLC. Uh, we got the brunch coming up in a couple weeks. Going, in. it's on eventbrite.com. We gonna be there. Niggas and team gonna be there. Y'all wanna come party with us, man? Come uh, get your tickets, man. Go get a table, get a bottle, do what you gotta do, man. Brunch coming up on the twenty seventh of this month, actually. So uh, shit, come holla at us, man. Let's go. It's on Eventbrite. You can get. You can What's get the name there. of the spot? Rhythm and Brunch. Uh, I don't the spot. Right. It's in uh, Santa Monica somewhere. Man, y'all need an opener, man. That's what's up. Nigga says, uh, Yeah. <laughs> y'all know my shit. <clears throat> Go to my link tree to get all my shit. Hotelfish.com, where I'm giving y'all the information and all that good stuff. Uh, y'all got my book for sales. Y'all still buying that book like crazy. I appreciate y'all. Oh, every shit, day I wake bro. up, it's a lot of books being sold every night. So I appreciate that. Yeah, my live drum sample packs, y'all been getting those. I got a few more that's coming out pretty soon. And uh, yeah, yeah, all that good shit, man. I'm up, I'm getting ready to do another webinar. I'm just waiting on a date. Um, it's going to be on parents communicating to their children things in life and how to break this hard shit down that's going on in life to, to the mind of a child. So yeah, that's coming up pretty soon too. How you break down Marilyn Manson to a child, man? <laughs> <laughs> now, you, don't, you don't. Yeah, we ain't talking about no Marilyn Manson. Man. But I, I'm, I'm teaching how to break down racism to a child right, right. as young as four years old. Because they can understand it. I also got to teach that to talk to your kids, man. Yeah. I was yelled at, nigga, and I didn't know what the fuck I did wrong, but I got socked in the mouth. So I did something. But I didn't never know, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, I would make that same mistake again, not knowing there was a correction there. You know what I'm saying? So talk to your kids, man. They're not stupid. They're not stupid at all. At all. Real spit. Look, man, I appreciate y'all supporting the show. Check out those chill with freestyles I put on YouTube. 
And oh, uh, that. you got some shit out. I didn't know. I like put out some freestyles promoting the album. Let these that. niggas know that I'm a really a, a MC at heart. You know. What How I'm many saying? albums you got? Man, I got six now. You got a six ball. Hey, <laughs> okay. 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 so I'm still at it, man. I ain't got that crystal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't never gonna stop. I'm gonna keep doing this shit That's forever, so, man. You know, yeah. the more rejection I face, the better it makes me. Yeah. Okay. I would never be creative. doing stand up if I would have been accepted like I was. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, I love y'all. Uh, For shit. Check out the website, thecraigsmith.com. Um, download the album. Shit, I think that's everything. If about always, that live show that's coming up? Yeah, the live show, man. This theater keep bullshitting with me. I'm going to have a, another date booked. Um, I'm going to have another date booked very soon, Let's man. I have it. a date booked in this theater bullshitting with me, but we're going to have something coming. I'm, I'm going to get it together. Let's go. go. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Yeah, yeah, man. If I owe you something, you can get it from God. It's been this episode. Hey, yeah. yeah. God, God. It's okay to keep the king. It's okay to keep the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay to keep the king. It's okay to keep the king.